All right, here we go. Session 78, Cold Lands, Hope and Despair. I think it's 78. Hopefully I've been keeping that number up. Um, let see. So a quick recap of our last session over here. Um, the last session I did quite a big write-up, so I'm probably going to miss some things. If I do, chime in, correct me, or let me know something I, I missed out that was uh, pretty important. So you guys basically start off met back at the uh, the tavern uh, where you met up with uh, Brevin and uh, Immelson. The, uh, the gith uh, from there you guys first encountered one of the uh, the zerth kind of like the gith priests that uh, shared with you guys some information said the minyar ag had told him that you guys were there and basically shared with you guys that you needed to have access to certain spells because of some of the things you may or may not encounter in the future and metagame wise that was uh, lesser restoration greater restoration or heal and at that time, I think we talked about it with, with the whole group. That I think Silith, you have access to those. And so, uh, I have one. Yeah, I have one of them, and someone else did too. I think Diddy had access to one or some of those as well. Did anyone uh, else here can. have access to those? You want to remember that? Yeah, lesser restoration, greater restoration, or heal. Uh, uh, I've got Dr. something Peek. like that. Diddy's got lesser. Okay, so. Dr. P got lesser as part of that rolling thing that we did for oh, his, right. uh, so he can use it once. Yeah, how convenient. So <laughs> part of that story was the fact that this, uh, this Zerth guy said that uh, the Minyar Ag was going to send one of these um, Zerth priests uh, on any ship that where they didn't have that capability. So metagame-wise, I was creating that in case you guys didn't have that capability. And as I recall, when we left off last session, I think you guys had one Zerth that was on the skiff with uh, Professor P and Twig. So you've got that in your back pocket. Um, okay, from there, let's see. Then uh, Emelzen shared with you guys that uh, the Minyar Ag want to meet with you guys and have this uh, communion thing. You guys uh, made your way to the Citadel. Um, basically met with the Minyar Ag briefly. He didn't have a whole lot of uh, conversations back and forth with him, but uh, part of this communion process was with this uh, strange-looking tree they called Ishun which is a gift for sacred tree. And each one of you guys had the opportunity to kind of basically gain a skill, which I think three or four of you guys basically ended up passing the, not passing, being granted, maybe is a better word, uh, of, the, of a new skill uh, based upon the little communion thing you guys went through. Uh, I'm trying to find my notes. Yes. So, yeah, Sylvia got one. I think that, no, Tolman failed. Silith, you failed Fail. as well? Okay. So who was it to pass then? I got it written here somewhere. Doctor P got religion. That's right. So I think three or four of you got your. But again. somebody got nature. Uh... Usul did, because it was his destiny, as I recall. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did um, did he get athletics? No. Diddy's athletics is a plus fifteen. Now, Diddy failed horribly, as I recall. He had like try to recognize the arcane runes. I think he failed like three times in a row, so he didn't get anything. Um, yeah, Usul did the the, the seeds, did that successfully. Uh, Silith, you were basically converted into a monkey trying to steal food, and you failed at that. Uh, Sylvia, oh yeah, she got transformed into a bird and had to protect her eggs, and she was successful with that. Twig. What did Twig do? Twig, oh, he's working with the dishonest, dishonest merchantman and was trying to intimidate him, but that failed. Uh, Professor P, oh yeah, recognized all the deities. He passed that one. Uh, who am I missing there? Uh, Toman. I did Toman offline, and uh, Toman failed. He basically had to, what was yours, Toman? Oh yeah, he's he got poisoned. He was trying to figure I out. what one critical failure, and I think I rolled a two on another one of my rolls. Yeah, he had a critical failure on one of his as well. He basically, he was poisoned. He had to try to figure out which berries to eat to negate the poison, but uh, he died. He ate the most poisonous berries. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so after that, again, the menu I met the guys again, basically told you guys to use your gifts wisely. Uh, mentions he had a short, brief conversation with Brevin. Basically, his, his grand, great-grandfather went through the same thing again, was blessed. But then he said something about Brevin's grandfather being in trouble at the end, and Brevin stormed off. Um, what else here? Uh, I guess 
from there, you guys all made your way to the Astral Barracks, where you guys met up with Baruch. He is the uh, Arbiter, or that's the, I guess, Gith term for Captain of the Ships. Um, you also met, I think, his Arbiter in training, Sanun. She can be traveling with you guys. And you guys basically started making your way out into the Astral Sea. Uh, he had six total ships. I believe there was four skiffs, one destroy and one breaker, if my memory serves you right. Uh, majority of you guys are on the destroyer, except for Professor P and and uh, Twig were on the skiff with Baruch and Sanun. Um, while you're on the ship, we're going to kind of retcon this a little bit, let you guys all do your little communion thing with your rings. And that's when the base of the clock starts for that. So for the next eight hours... Uh, yeah, I got my notes here. Professor P had a plus one to his breastplate. He had one cast in Greater Restoration. Diddy had plus two to his AC. And he gets Mage Hand at will for the next eight hours. Sylvia got a plus one to her AC. And one but casting... I think, Go ahead. I think that's over now. No, it's not it? Because I cast... He's retconning this. No, that just happened. Oh. I mean, literally right before we ended. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think technically you did it earlier in the session, but I was going to say, okay, that's fine, guys. Let's retcon this. You do it right at the same time everybody else when we first leave on the ship. Okay? Okay. And, and Usul, I can't remember if you already did yours or not. My notes, I got a big question mark on it. Did you do this yet? I did. I did. Okay. Uh, I got uh, plus one AC all day, and then polymorph into a tree ant one time. Right, and everything that, the, that you guys get with this, it all lasts for eight hours. I include your AC. It's not all day, so it's the next eight hours. Sorry, Brian, and mine was plus one to AC, and what was the... Uh... One casting of a mass healing word for the next eight hours. Okay. And that's basically 3d4 plus 10. That's what you get on mass healing okay. word. Okay. Um, when I, I passed that thing, what did I get out of that? I don't, I don't recall. You should be proficient in nature now. Ah, uh, that's right. Thank that's, you. That's basically just clicking on the little uh, proficiency there, uh, little button next to uh, nature on your character sheet. And that is done. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that's my cliff note version. Nope, there was another thing. I think uh, Sylvia was one to ask this question or start having the conversation with Shrala. I think she called him a dude at first, but realized it was actually a female. And uh, he was basically telling her that if they saw those chaos pods, not to touch it. Uh, he kind of showed her a brief little demonstration of how these little contraptions they've got to basically try to capture these things and then throw them off the ship. And uh, Yes. So Sylvia would have been part of that. And I think Tolman, even though you weren't there, Tolman, you were part as well because they were kind of using you as a as a uh, guinea pig to, to show Sylvia how you catch these things with these little contraptions. It's basically like a 10-foot a pole with some kind of contraption at the end of it that kind of grabs it like fingers. And there's a couple of those things on the skiff, and there's, like, there's four of them on the destroyer. Okay? Anything I missed? Clear as mud. Okay. All right, so let me switch the map to where we left off last time because you guys are about an hour into your journey. To when the guys on the skiff, uh, I had your roll perception. You guys didn't get it, so basically I've got a surprise round for the bad guys. What bad guys? <laughs> Let me move my map, zoom out. This thing's freaking big, so I apologize. All right, so I'm gonna do a shift click over here. So right here, when we last left off. There was two of these chaos pods come streaking out of the bubble, so to speak. And let me rephrase this. I'll, I'll make sure everyone's aware of this. So what I've got here in front of you on this map, you can see the red line. i got a red line, kind of a, a circle around the skiff. And I've got one kind of around the, uh, uh, the big destroyer as well. That's your I guess, safety bubble, for lack of a better term. All that is considered like an air-dominant environment. Beyond that is the actual chaos itself. So your vision is limited to those lines right there. I kind of dropped in a big magma boulder or whatever the hell this thing is on the skiff to kind of give it a better representation. So basically beyond that 30 feet, you can't see anything. It's just chaos. It's either fire or it's magma or it's boulders or it's you know something you can't really see through. Does that make sense? So we yeah. don't have contact with them in the skiff? 
you, unless you have like sending or something like that, no. Nope. So we do not know. Okay. So these these skiffs, well, at least Baruch's skiff, was out in front of the destroyers, and through the course of the hour, they would scoot out, you know, so many feet, and then come back, scoot back. They would kind of go back and forth, kind of like a rogue does when he kind of scouts out the area for everybody. Okay. So they were out there scooting out ahead of the destroyer when two of these chaos pods kind of come ripping through the, uh, uh, I guess, the edge of the uh, your little air bubble there. Okay, and that's where we left off the last session. All right, so... Um, Brian, if I may, yes. um, can I switch out my attunement to the cloak on the cloak of gliding to the Blade Master gloves during my downtime? Yeah, you have done it the day before. I mean, if you're, you want to start doing that during this this journey, that's a different story. But we can retcon that. If you want to change that out, I'm okay with that. If you don't mind. If, if not, I can, I'll can. i do it at a later time. No, that's cool. I'm not going to worry about that. That's fine. Thank you. All right. So what uh, Dr. P and Twig, you notice it, but the last second, two of them just erupt, and they shoot right past you. One of them goes right past you, and then it disappears. You're not sure where it went. And the other one lands smack dab right here between the uh, the knight and the monk right here. And you watch as this one here is going to, as it lands, it's like a little blob of teeth and fangs and tentacles. You're not sure what it, it's a conglomeration of all kinds of different things. But right before it landed, you saw it shape shift into some kind of like, almost like a... Uh, What's those damn things? Like a manta ray. As it slowed down, then it landed right on right next to these two. And you watch it reach out to try to attack one of these. Swipes at both of them. You see both of them kind of freak out and kind of sidestep it as it misses. Uh, and that's it for their surprise round. Ooh, that was awesome. Okay, right, Dr. P, you're up next. What do you want to do here? Uh, just in case Twig didn't see, I say, Twig, there's something on the back of the boat! <laughs> and then he's going to uh, just sh shoot at it. Can he? Does he have a good shot from here? Uh, he's going to have uh, partial cover. The monk's kind of in the way. Oh, not for me, sharpshooter. <laughs> Damn you. Not see anything in the chat. Not in my from heaven. Holy oh, shit! Okay. <laughs> All right, bam. He Dude, that it. was for uh, twenty damage. It hit AC twenty three for twenty. So twenty damage. What you're saying? Yeah, that definitely hits with your damn sharpshooter thing. It, it's pierced. And then hit AC fifteen for fifteen damage. Okay, and it's so, got to make a DC 12 save or be knocked prone. Okay, this will be interesting. Okay, so you shoot once, you hit it, and you see it kind of writhe up and kind of all like a head forms out of it with some teeth looking in your direction. You sink the second one right into its mouth, and you watch the thing kind of shudder a little bit, and then it explodes. <laughs> and about a 10-foot uh -oh. radius. <laughs> and as soon as you do that, you hear the monk and the knife both going, no! Let me add an aura to this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's just me. Whew. And it splatters. Wait, did you know they explode? <laughs> it splatters by about five feet in front of your feet, and also five feet in front of Twig. But it just, you see bits and pieces of it kind of go all over both the, the knight and the monk. And now I've got to read. Because this is bad. You made it go pop. <laughs> Holy shit. I rolled two natural 20s. So you see them both kind of, like they see it coming. They both just jump back or sidestep it. Bits and pieces of it go flying all over the place. And the monk, means or the free action is going to turn around and says, You idiot! Don't freaking kill it when it's standing next to me! Okay, Twig. Anything else for you, Dr. P? Is there a Twig, second? watch out, they explode! <laughs> Is there a second one? You saw two of them erupt, but you lost sight of one of them. Okay, I'm going to look for the other one. Okay, how are you going about looking for it? 
with my eyes is about all I got. And I'll, I'll ready my bow in case I see it. If I see it, I'm going to shoot it. Okay, so kind of like show me a general area where you're looking by ping on the, on the map or something. Are you looking on the actual deck? Uh, the deck and up the up the mast. Okay. All right. Give me a perception check. Well, because I'm so good at that being a ranger. Mm-hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you look all over the place. Look up the mast on the side. All you see is the little bits and pieces of uh, the one that exploded up there, but you can't you see any signs of uh, of the uh, uh, the other one. Where'd the other one go, P? It disappeared to the southwest. Which way is the bloody southwest in here? Uh, uh, port, ah, port, port, rear, aft, port. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I can do is look for it. If I see it, I'm going to shoot it. But Okay, so you're going to hold an action to shoot it if you see it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, I guess I really should do initiative for these guys, since I never did. You know, I learned the other day, Brian, if you have them on the GM's layer and you're all initiative, the players can't see the initiative them in the turn order, but you can. I know. I like that. <laughs> so let's move the monk up here. That was great fun whenever goblins were trying to chase you all through that, that last dungeon. Yeah, I like being secretive. That's kind of fun that way, huh? All right, so... This guy right here, what did I say he was going to do? I had it in my head, and now, now I've lost it. That sucks getting old. All right, so he's going I'm to... i sure he yelled at Twig, or yelled at P. Yeah, first thing he's going to do is start cussing and gith at Professor P as he kind of gingerly walks around and out of the way over here. And he'll look around, he'll basically uh -huh. have free action, say, keep your eyes out. There was two of them. I don't know where it is, but I, I saw it erupt. And at this, the uh, the ship is going to start turning around, and the monk will tell you that uh, that Art Baruch will more than likely send a message to one of the other ships, let them know what's going on here. But he's going to circle back around to uh, see if he can get closer or warn the other ships over there. And the other night's going to move back out of all the mess over here, and he's going to kind of look down this one side of the of the ship along the outside over here. The night is. I'm retconning back to his his initiative from before. And see him looking around, but doesn't seem to say anything. But he's got his uh, great sword out. Actually, you know what? That's what the monk was going to do. He comes running up this way, and he's going to grab uh, one of those ten-foot poles. I don't think you guys on this ship even asked about that. Is that correct? I think I was just on the destroyer. Nope. Okay. We did not ask. All right. So he's grabbing one of these uh, uh, long ten-foot poles. that got some kind of contraption in the of it. And he's just going to kind of stand there at the ready. Okay, so that was him. Do, do, do. <laughs> Is that the silver coin with the scrotum on it? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the one, yes. <laughs> silver it's coin with the scrotum on it. Yeah. It's a foot pole and it's got a scrotum drawn on it. <laughs> ah. Okay, I see where this is this devolved to now. Okay, alright, so... One second while I switch layers. Uh. Okay. Alright, start of round two. Dr. P, anything different you're doing? Uh, Dr. P is going to... Um, uh, I guess he, he'll ad adrenaline dart himself. This is, this is going to get him... <laughs> Adrenaline dart yourself? Was that the haste? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> uh, he hits himself very accurately. <laughs> like you've done this before or something. Okay. Um, and then he's going to look around and see if he sees him. Um, if Twig's looking kind of at him, then he's going to look past Twig. Holy crap. I'm wasting them all. But kind of get Kind of <laughs> click what... Area you're, kind of, you're looking up beyond the ship. You're looking on the ship. Just kind of click. Okay, you're looking beyond the ship. Okay. All right. As you look out beyond the ship into the void, all you see is the the magma and everything back behind it. But even with that awesome perception check, you're not seeing anything that looked like that thing came flying Brian, through the air. You're you're cutting in a little bit. Am I, guys? 
Let me try. Plug it in. One second. Is that any better? Yeah, it seems know when... to be right now. Okay. See what happens when you start talking a long sentence again. <laughs> okay. So how much of that did you hear or miss, Dr. P? Um, I heard that even with the awesome perception, I failed. Right. Basically. Can't see anything. It looks like whatever that thing was. And all you got to compare it to is a bunch of bits and pieces on the ground now. No, but... you're, still, you're still going. Well, son of a bitch. What's going on? One second, guys. Is your, is your mic not close enough? Are you on push dock or you're on... No, uh... I'm not on push dock. Yeah. I can hear it pretty good now. It's, it seems better. It's pretty good, but it's, it's sometimes it just clips out. I can see it on Discord when his, uh, his mic stops lighting up. One second. Let me try shutting some other stuff off here. See if it makes a difference. Uh, no, it should just be where your microphone gain is. Yeah, I'm wearing my headset, though. And my dog's freaking out. You guys probably hear that. Actually, I can't hear your dog at all. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm just shutting some other stuff down, guys. Just to make sure. Try uh, adjusting where your mic boom is. Did you guys hear me fine when we before we started? No, no, it was I, still doing a little bit, but I wasn't having issues hearing you. It's no more than normal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. He was trying to say he doesn't listen to you, anyways. <laughs> All right, so basically, you failed your, your save. You didn't see. I mean, you failed your perception check. Can't see anything beyond uh, just the 30 feet out in front of you, all the magma or whatever is floating around in space. Okay? Got it. Anything else you want to do? Nope, that's it. Okay. The monk is going to move over to this side of the ship. And he's going to look off the side of the ship there. And you'll notice, Professor P, he's actually he's not looking out in the space. He's actually looking down along the side of the ship. As a matter of fact, you watch as he kind of steps off the side of it. And he starts walking along the side of the ship. Ooh. Okay. Twig. Twig, since he didn't see anything in the direction they looked on the mast, he starts looking over the rail. And okay. how high is that rail in relation to Twig? All right, it's only about four or five feet, so probably about your head height. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Twig's actually hopping up, or not hopping up, but like wrapping his arms over the rail like a little kid leaning over and looking over the rail down the sides of the ship. He's got to stick his head through the bars and get stuck. <laughs> no, he's not doing that <laughs> yet. All right, give me another perception check. Yeah, I'm blind. No. <laughs> Aren't you missing an eye? <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, yeah, all your perception checks are going to be at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything else, Twig? That's all Twig can do. I mean, he's going he's gonna to bring it to action in case he sees it, and he'll shoot at it. But Okay. All right. And the knight, he's going to follow suit like the monk. He's going to walk over here and grab the second pole. And then he'll start making his way back up here where he was. But that's going to be his turn. And then, okay. i got to switch layers again. Not that that means anything to you guys. Of course it does. It means you're being sneaky. All right, so that's end of round two. So now, back on the other ship, um, you guys start seeing a ruckus of some of the other folks on board. And Sarala will be the first one to kind of shout at you guys. Okay, guys, we got danger. We got danger. There's been chaos pod sighted above. Just everyone, just prepare. And she looks back at uh, Sylvia. Don't touch it. Remember, don't touch it. So go ahead and roll me initiative for the rest of the guys on that uh, destroyer ship. Except Self. Uh, are you sleeping? Self is sleeping. Uh, yeah, for this round, yeah. They're going to eventually make the <laughs> rounds. They'll wake everybody up. But yeah, for right now... Sound an alarm or something? Yep. Okay, everybody in? I'll do it for the other guys here. No, they're not all in. Am I in the destroyer that we should be rolling for? 
Uh, everybody should. Go ahead and roll it whether you're asleep or not, just so I got you in the order. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, I have to roll for Diddy, right? Oops, that's why I'm sitting here like, la, la, la. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, that's um, Diddy. <laughs> and this is Silith. I can't find my token on the map, but I rolled. Tillman, you're right here. See where I'm picking? Oh, hold on. Let me do a shift click. Left of the lava. Okay, I see it now. I had to scroll out some. Yeah, I did. I had the same problem. I did, um, yeah, so two for Diddy okay, and I'll fifteen for Silver. Okay, do I need to add anybody? Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, uh, Silith and Diddy. Did he had a two and so out a fifteen? Okay. So out a fifteen, you said, right? Yeah. Fifteen, and then did he? Where's he at? Oh, he's down there with you. Yeah, I, I didn't scroll over either. I was like, ah, oh, just click. <laughs> and he had a two. Two, yeah, critical fail on initiative. I got okay. both sheets open on my other monitor, and I was like, Mer. <laughs> Okay, so if everybody's in, I'm going to resort this. That was the end of round two. Read my notes. Okay, that's it. All right, Dr. P, you're up again. All right, taking a cue from uh, uh, the monk guy, um, Dr. P... He's going to test the waters. He, uh, <laughs> he steps off the edge. Okay. Does he float there as well? Yeah, as you recall, uh, I think Emelzen or at least the guy, maybe someone on the ship would have told you before you took off, if you didn't already know it, that the gravity, gravity, the gravity is, is relative. So you basically can, can control with your own mind which way gravity is as you move around. So you can walk on walls, you can walk on ceilings, so you can walk anywhere you want. There's a solid surface. So he's going under the ship. Okay, so again, that ship. He's gonna go under the ship, like right here, to look, to look uh, uh, underneath. Okay. Want me another perception check? Ah. All right. So you think you see some kind of movement, kind of in this general direction over here, the far back side of the ship. I'm feeling frisky. <laughs> it, it doesn't violate any of the monk's rules about being near anyone, does it? I don't, I don't know. What are you trying to do? Shoot it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I don't have a target token to click on, though. Uh, it, can I make sure that it's not the monk? With that <laughs> I, told, I also see him. I told you what you saw. You think you see something moving over here. One shot to see if it yelps, Baymax. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll fire off an arrow. How do you want me to do it? Uh, just click on one of the other uh, tokens. Just click on Twig. Or Baymax, whatever you want. <laughs> so is that a minus five again? Yeah, so that'd be a 14. Okay. And you, you hear it hit something, you hear something kind of squeal, but again, you can't Does it see what... Does sound like a gift or <laughs> no? I don't know if you've ever heard a gift get shot by uh, uh, one of your things, right? No. Okay, so how do you know? How the heck? What am I clicking we'll, on? We'll do a normal one, so that's at actual six. The last 16. one was plus 10, right? So it was 19 piercing damage? No, it's only 9. nine. So okay. the last two, if 16 hits, then it's 9 and 7. Okay. All right, so the last one's a 9. All right, so that one goes wide. You see, just shoot right off into the, the abyss, the chaos beyond. Doesn't hit anything. No, no, 9 damage. I'm sorry. It hit AC 16. It's it's 9 piercing damage. Oh, okay. So you didn't do sharpshooter on that one. No, the last two shots that he shot with adrenaline, he did not. He okay. Did not use sharpshooter. 
Right. So you hit again, you hear, you hear a sizzling sound, and a, you see little bits and pieces of something go floating off into the abyss. Okay. okay. I'll hang out there and, and keep watch. <laughs> Just hanging out in the front of the ship? Okay. Absurd. Yeah, yeah, it's underneath it. What are you doing? As Shrala is screaming for you guys to keep a lookout. Watch the skies. Uh, I'm going to uh, get my bow out and start looking over, um, looking at the uh, left front of the uh, ship. Okay. Uh, scanning my sector. Okay, kind of ping where you're looking at for me. I didn't see you ping if you pinged. Holy crap, are you pinging like way off the map? <laughs> I don't. I, there no, we he's go. On the other sh oh, he's on the other side. Sorry. Ship, right? I had to get on the right button. Okay, all right. So now I see you. Okay, you're looking in that general direction over there, right? Yep, yep. Okay. All right, go and roll your perception if you want. Okay. He, Ouch. He whispered that to me. Okay. Ah, anything, anything else, Usul? I'm back. Sorry. That's it. Okay. Uh, this monk is going to move over to the side of the ship over here. And uh, from this vantage point, he looks back at you, Professor P, and he kind of gives you a thumbs up. And then he starts walking back up on top of the ship. A thumbs up or a thumbs down? <laughs> <laughs> He said thumb and then cut out right then. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said thumbs up. Thumbs up. Excellent. Okay. And Shrala, she's going to run up to the side here and grab one of those poles. And she's going to be barking orders to the uh, these grunts over here to kind of do the same thing. So she grabs one of those poles and she's standing there looking, uh, scanning the skies. Silith, on this turn... Uh, one of these crew members is going to run up here and start banging the doors, shouting something in GIF that you don't understand, and then run back. So I'll let it you, know, you decide how much of a sound sleeper you are. Silas going to wake up, but he's not going to be like up. <laughs> okay. It's, you... it's, it's enough he sat up in bed and took his eye mask off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And then you want to do in your turn then? Uh, no, Sylph is fine for the moment. Okay. All right, Twig, what are you doing? Twig is still vainly looking for something. So at this point, he's going to start walking down the hull of the ship and around the other side the short way. Kind of following Dr. P's method, what you're saying? It, it, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and move yourself. What part of the ship you're going to stay on? If you're just going straight down, going the outside of it, but it's just just hopping over the rail and going straight down. Okay. And what direction Remember. are you looking? Perception wise. Uh, toward the aft of the ship as he goes under the ship. Oh, great! After the ship, like I'm a sailor. Which one's the aft of the ship? <laughs> the back of the ship, Brian. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Give me a perception check. Remember, that's a disadvantage because I'm one-eyed. Yep. All right. So you're having a hard time focusing. It's like there's, there's so much stuff going on behind, like the, the magma is like changing and stuff's on fire and it's moving. So you can't quite pick up anything. Anything else for Twig? Nope. Well, ready in actual case to see something. Okay. All right. So the Gith crew have all been notified. All right. So just so you guys are aware, actually no one in here would even see that. If I give Twig a scope, which you only can look at it through one eye, did, would his did it negate his disadvantage? Hmm. No, but I'm going to rule it. probably takes like a bonus action or something to, to wield, or if not an action. Gotcha. All right, so you see, just see some general movement amongst, amongst the crew. They more most like the, the crew themselves kind of back up a little bit and just kind of watching the skies. But none of them really take uh, take aim of anything. They don't really have any weapons. Okay. The knight. 
He the knight right here. He's gonna kind of do the same thing. Twig is. He's gonna kind of just move right out of the edge and just kind of stand there scanning. <laughs> and he rolls a three. He doesn't see squat. The grunts. This guy is gonna grab one of the the poles. Let me give him a little token so so I know he's got one. I'll do this. And Serralo's got one. She grabbed one. I'll give her a blue dot. This guy is going to run back to the back. He's going to pick up one of them. Are they what like is he grabbing? Those 10-foot poles. That's what they were explaining to, to Sylvia and Toman, but they use those to basically capture these pods and then throw them off the ship. Think yeah. like like an animal handling leash for dogs. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Okay. Or just think of them as 10-foot scrotum coins, whatever. <laughs> No, they're not scrolling. That works, going. too. <laughs> All right, Toman, what are you doing? I will uh, follow their lead, grab a pole, and uh, keep an eye out for these things. Okay. And where are you moving to? Uh, is there opening windows or uh, portholes or anything along the uh, side of the ship on this side? Well, it's kind of like railings. If, if you oh, scroll up just a little bit, you can kind of see the ship up here to the top. That kind of shows like a side view of it. I understand now. Sorry, I was missing. For some reason, I thought I was below deck. All right, so I'll move. I thought that was the enemy's ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other pole would have been right here if you're going to grab the, the pole and use that. Yeah, I'll grab the pole and move to the side of the ship there. Okay, we'll give you a little blue icon just to... Let me know that you've got the pole. Okay, so that's all four of them. Okay. And you're looking, you're walking on the side of the ship. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to be looking for these things, see if I can see one and ward it off. Okay. Kind of uh, point or ping where you're looking. Okay. Just off on the, straight off. Okay, give me a perception. Ooh, look at you. Okay, I gotta write that down. Okay, I'll resolve that if and when something becomes visible. <laughs> okay, Excellent. so let me do this. Okay. All right, so Diddy, what's right, Diddy so doing? Pip, Diddy has noticed that uh, Silith has not woken up, and he's seen the uh, gift run by with the kind of frantic warnings. So he's gonna go wake up Silith. He's gonna he's gonna move down here, and he's gonna be like, "Hey, uh, uh, Silith, buddy, you uh, you think you might want to wake up now?" That didn't sound I, very I Australian. Do, <laughs> I can't do this accent. Okay, come on. <laughs> Rand, Rand, do it for me. Oh, wake up, wake up, Silith, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be good. So Silith's going to control his actions, and Ranger's going to do all the talking for him. This will, this will work good. Okay. All right, anything else for Diddy? Uh, he's going to... Uh, actually, I didn't measure the distance there for movement. Oops. Yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be his whole... He's going to expend his whole thing to show up there, right, right there, be like, just start... Basically waking up, uh, waking up. So like, up, up. We're under. There's something wrong. Okay. No worries. All right. So next up, uh, Tolman, you're the fir well. You're technically, right now, you're the. I'll tell you, you're the only one. Maybe you are. Maybe you aren't. You start seeing these things just shoot out from the edge of the bubble that you guys are in, rocketing towards you guys, above you guys, below you guys. Um, by your rough count, as fast as they are, maybe eight of them come shooting out, and you see them at the last second kind of change shape into these kind of like a flat-winged stingray, for lack of a better term, and they start floating a little bit sl slower as they start approaching the ship. You watch one of them kind of shoot underneath the ship over here. Uh, one second, got to figure out where they are, because I had rolled this before you guys started. You see another I'll be one. I'll out to everyone as I see 
this one also shoot in this direction. Let me do the arrows. Maybe that'll work out better so you can see what direction they're going. Uh, so the first one you saw shooting on the ship going this direction. The rest of you guys should see that as well, right? The arrows. If not, I'll do it again. First one shoots this direction. You see another one shooting underneath the ship in this direction. Uh, you see... What did you roll for perception? Oh, 26. You see and hear a thud towards the front of the ship up here. Uh, where's the other ones? <laughs> Are those Dr. P's here? <laughs> and you see two more shoot underneath the ship as well. Don't hear anything, but two more shoot underneath the sh ship. And two shoot up high, kind of the same direction. Okay. All right, now relay all this information out loud, pointing and yelling. Okay, you'll see a couple of the uh, the Gith guys kind of shouting something in Gith as well and pointing kind of the same general direction where you where this guy is. And what this is one it? Here. Okay, uh, Sylvia, did I skip you in the order? Yeah, I was uh, I was walking my dogs, so I didn't uh, have a chance. Okay, roll initiative. Okay. Anybody else I missed? I didn't, did I? No, I think. Okay. Ooh, 18. Look at you. I know. I'm very initiative to today. All right, so how much of that did you hear about what all just happened? Um, I heard, well, because I don't know what happened on the other ship with shooting the things... Yep. I heard that there were some bubbles that came through and went under the ship, and that was about it. And they turned into, like, manta ray-type creatures. Right. Okay. That's right. Uh, that's as far as I know. Okay. All right. So go ahead and move if you want. You've had a, a round where you could have reacted to Sarala warning you guys that there was a you know, chaos pod sighting uh, on the skiff out ahead of you guys. Okay. La la la. La la la. I'm going to come over here near, right in the middle of the ship. Okay. Nothing ever comes in the middle of the ship. Okay. All right. So, Dr. P, we're back to you now. What are you doing? Um, does Dr. P see anything else? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Give me a perception. Do, do, do. I mean, he's rocking the perception rolls. <sighs> Damn it. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Yeah, you see two more come rocketing from the other side towards the ship as well. And i got to roll randomly and see where these things land. These are the creatures? Same they're thing. Arrows. Now they're coming from the other direction. So let me switch to my other layer since you see these coming. See if it would help if I put these on the actual layer where you can see them. No, nah, it's not required. And Twig and the Knight, obviously, because they're coming right for you guys. And this one right here is going to slam onto the uh, the deck. So, again, you don't see it land, but you hear it like a thud up here. And this one, actually, in the trajectory, is going to land. Uh, how far down the ship are you, Twig? About halfway down. Okay, so that's probably about where it is as well. Oops. Oh, lovely. Up. I screwed up their eight, their hit points. I got to fix that. And that's all they did was just land there. Okay. So, Dr. P, that's what you saw. You can't see them right now, but you saw them appear from the sky over here. And then you heard a thud up here. Got it. Dr. P is going to uh, use his movement to go up to where he can see onto the ship deck. Okay. Die, you crazy pods! <laughs> and he just <laughs> unleashes more arrows of death. <laughs> and as you do that, just like before, the Gith Girl going, no, 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 no! <laughs> They're just <laughs> right next to it. <laughs> Holy shit. So, again, that's just regular damage, right? No, so, so you'll see it, it says add plus 10. Okay. Whenever that says that, then then you have to. That's a twenty-three to hit in fifteen damage. 
Okay. Crap. And then the other one is a 16 to hit and 16 damage. And then I guess I'll wait and see what happens from that. The Professor P's a ranger? Yeah. He's a tinkerer. He seems to be doing better than the ranger. <laughs> the ranger only has one eye. <laughs> like the other ranger only had one arm. <laughs> so the first one's 15, the second one is 16, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so just like before... You slam into it with two arrows, and then you watch it explode. But it didn't hurt the ship last time, right? <laughs> didn't hurt the ship, but now I need you and the two gift guys to make a deck save as this thing splatters in a 10-foot radius. Uh, oh, but there's no one near me. There's no one near you? He's at the front of the ship. Everyone else at the back. You should, this yeah, one right here. No yeah, there's no one there, but who's around him? You don't see these like, gift crew right here? No. They wait. No. no. We don't, yeah. There's. There's Unless nothing about the coins. I see the scrotum coins. That's it, dude. Yep. <laughs> no, that's that's the crew. No. You thought that was the poles. No. Been grabbing, people have been grabbing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that don't sound good. Uh, you thought those were the I poles. I am so glad Doctor P didn't go for the pole. <laughs> <laughs> No, these little jerk uh, tokens here are the crew. My fault, guys. So if you want to retcon that to not fire, I'll let you do that. <laughs> oh, no, fire. Just, just fire. I, I think I have to fire. Get out of the way, scrotum <laughs> poles! <laughs> All right, so you and both the gift crew, I need deck saves. Oh, look at him. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right, so you see the thing just explode. It's dead. I mean, a bunch of pieces go flying everywhere. You're able to kind of sidestep it. But both of these guys get hit by it. And now I've got to read. I'm sorry! <laughs> okay, so seven. I don't know if this shows up in your chat or not. I'm going to click on it to see what happens. Oh, we just lost somebody. Did you lose me? Sorry. Not Sylvia. Oh, there he is. All right, so never mind this token here that I just added in there. That's just me so I can control all these guys with one thing. Uh, this one. Oh, there we go. Now it's in the chat. Well, DM chat. <laughs> yeah, 7 out of 12. All right, so this guy right here gets hit. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Oh, wow, he gets hit in the head. You see him immediately grab his head and start screaming as you see the side of his face is starting to kind of melt. <laughs> and the other guy gets hit. It splashes up against his arm. And you see him immediately kind of shake his hand up a little bit. And you see bits and pieces of his fingers just kind of fly, fly off of his, of, his, of his hand. And he starts screaming. Give these guys Dr. Over. P feels like uh, the, that guy without superpowers in Deadpool 2. Uh, <laughs> I, very, very sorry for these folks. And Twig doesn't see any of this, so... Nope. You can hear the screaming, but uh, yeah, you Yeah, but that could, be something, that could be something P did, I mean. Yep. So. I mean, it was something he did. Well, he knows now what happens to them. The monks agilely dodged it. Don't let the scrotum poles get hit. He understands now. <laughs> Strotum pulls. Oh, jeez. Okay, anything else, Doctor P? Um, um, he's gonna move closer to those guys so that he can try to heal them. <laughs> okay. Next round. Okay, Usul, you're up, buddy. Uh, I think I'm gonna uh, put my bow away and grab one of those uh, catch poles. Oh, there's none left. There's only four of them. Each guy that has a little blue dot has a has a pole. All right, I guess I'll keep my bow and continue looking in my sector. Uh, you said there was some um, action coming over from the other side, though, correct? Um, your perception roll was not high enough to notice them coming. This guy over here would have been pointing that incoming was coming, but you wouldn't have seen anything. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue uh, look, scanning my sector then. Okay, kind of ping what uh, area you're looking at. Okay. All right. 
And just so you're aware, everything came from the opposite direction. Are you cool with that? Didn't you just say that I didn't notice any of that? Right, but this guy up here would have been pointing where they were coming from. This guy oh, okay. would have been... I would scan uh, the opposite side then. Okay. All right, so give me a perception check then. Oh, 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 that's good. I like this. All right, so, so what you see, you're not sure if it's what the guy was pointing out or not, but you see a giant tentacle just right up on the edge of where the chaos is, kind of temporarily break through your air pocket and then go back into the uh, the chaos. I'll, I'll just point. <laughs> and say nothing? <laughs> no, no, I'll go. I saw a tentacle and, and point. It's okay. Kind of like a little but I, was, I was thinking about shooting it, but, like, you know, I might... It might be one of our own ships or something. Okay. Anything else, Usul? That's it. Okay. Uh, okay, the monk. He's got the pole. Um, would he have seen anything? Hey, Brian, real yep. quick. So yep. Need some clarification. Where are the poles, then? Are they just kind of theater of the mind? This guy has one on your ship, and this guy has the other one. There's only two of them. And the monk okay, and the never... knight both have them. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, this is making more sense now. Yeah, the, well, the blue dots <laughs> means they're holding on to one of the poles. There was four of them on the destroyer. There was two on the skiff. Got it. Okay. All right, so this monk saw them as well. And he's a monk, so he can just like kind of parkour over here on the side. And he gets within 10 feet of it. And he's going to try to take this pole and you watch Twig as he kind of tries to grab this thing as it's basically standing right next to you. Before he does that, Twig had an action ready. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead then. That's okay. I just, it just hadn't come up yet and I wasn't worried about it. And hold on a minute. Let me find there. He <laughs> now he's right next to you. Do you have disadvantage on it? Well, it doesn't matter. You got a 23 on it. Doesn't anyway. matter with that roll. <laughs> okay. All right. So kind of take a step back and at least one the last second you hit it and it kind of hisses and you watch as where the, where the arrow goes into it was like some kind of weird tentacle. And the tentacle almost like retreats into its body and then it turns into a mouth that's got that bolt kind of stuck in it. This thing is constantly kind of changing into all kinds of different things as it's rising next to you, but you do hit it. Okay, and that was your reaction. And now the monk is going to come off the side over there with his 10 foot pole and try to grab a hold of it. And I got to check his dex mod. It reaches out of it and you see it kind of, the, the thing kind of transforms into a very flat, kind of right up next to the, the ship. And his little contraption kind of goes right over top of it and he misses it. And the monk's going to yell at you to get back, Twig. And that's his turn. Strala, did she see anything? Hell yeah, she did. She starts screaming at you guys to, uh, to let, her, let her take care of it. And she steps off the side. And then, Usul, so you'll see this. I don't think anybody else will from this vantage point. But you see her start to run along the side of the ship in this direction. And that's all you see, so because she disappears off the side. Okay, Sylvia, you're up. Uh, so, Sylvia? Sylvia Sorry about that, my it's mic my was name. muted. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I don't see any... From where I'm standing, I can't see any of these potential uh, floating pods. Oh, you would have seen this guy pointing, and Tolman, whatever he said, are okay. pointed as well. Because those are the only two that really saw anything incoming. Okay. But there's nothing on the ship, then? Nothing that you can see. Okay. Um, even with my, uh, my mask on? Yeah, they're not invisible. They're just below the ship. Oh, okay. Oh, they're the just game -wise. below the ship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, if I can't see them, there's not much I can do. 
I'm just gonna, I guess, ready. Which way were you looking? Well, if this guy pointed, I'm gonna look. I assume he's pointing in that direction. Yeah, he would have pointed, saying incoming. But you know what he said? He said it in GIF, but he pointed in that direction. Okay. Um, yeah, then I, I ready in action if, uh, like a firebolt, if anything comes, if I see it come within, like, uh, sort of in this quadrant, or sorry, uh, there we go. Basically the direction he was pointing in, is what I'm hearing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, go on, roll me a perception. Now, now, okay, and he did, he did tell us about the, uh, explodey stuff, or do I still not know that? Because I'm on, obviously on a different ship. Uh, Srala would have told you not to touch it. As I recall, she didn't say anything about it exploding. She just said, don't touch it. Okay. So, I mean, I'm clearly not seeing shit. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. So, I'll just ready a, a firebolt in case anything comes within, you know, like towards, at when it's at, like coming towards the edge of the ship, and I'll just okay. blast okay. it. Okay. All right, Silith, you're up next, buddy. What are you gonna do? You waking up? Silith is up. He's got Diddy here hounding him. There's all kinds of ruckus about. Uh, I want to roll perception. Has Silith been hearing like thuds against the ship nearby? Uh, uh, give me a perception. Hmm. Nah, you can hear a lot of shouting and stuff from you know this general direction and maybe up above as well, but you don't see anything. So Silith doesn't know what all the ruckus is about. He's like, oh, she just can't get any rest around here. And uh, he's gonna flounce up with uh, with Diddy, and he's gonna he's gonna start making his way. Uh, was that was those Arbiter and Trainee there earlier? I don't think they were last time, but I dropped them in there. But that's the guy that's piling oh, the ship, okay, and like, that's kind of like his backup. Yeah, like, I don't think I went past them earlier, but they're there now. Okay. Um, yeah, and he's gonna start making his way to come above decks. Okay. You can't quite get there in one round, but your next round you'll be able to uh, uh, yeah, make it out. Uh, he's going with Diddy too, so. Okay. All right. Anything else for Silith? Uh, he's basically just you know fluffing his robes down. They are a little wrinkled from sleeping in them. Okay. Hmm. All right. Twig. Back over Twig to you. Heeding, heeding the monk's instructions, starts backing up the hull. To get up on the main deck, but as he's backing, he fires his bow. Are you disengaging? Uh, no, he's only gonna move beside the monk ultimately, but he's gonna back up away from him and fires his. Move. Okay, he gets a reaction. I'm assuming an eight misses. Yes. Okay. All right, so <laughs> you get one shot as oh, you get two as your reaction. Sorry, not a reaction. Yeah, use your reaction anyway. It's got 15 hits for six. And the second one hits as well for six. Two bolts kind of sink into it. You see it almost like it, it hits it. You can see it kind of writhe back a little bit, and then it kind of changes shape, and you see the uh, the bolt kind of drop out of it. Took some damage, but you're not sure how much. Anything else for Twig? That's all I can do. Okay. Crew. Okay, so who? Where did I got crew at? Nothing on the skiff. The crew are all over here. Oh, there was on the. <laughs> there was two get two crew on the skiff. The the coin purse guys, your your scrotum guys, or whatever you're calling them. <laughs> all right. So. They're still alive, right? Yeah, but the one guy, his side of his face is melting, and the other guy, like his hand is almost like melting away, and like he he slung his hand like he got you know got hit by it, and like you saw like one of his fingers kind of just slough off and and splatter onto the deck. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so you see the the guy on the, I guess, the left of the screen right here. Again, his face is starting to melt, and you see it, it, it's kind of growing on him, and it goes down into his chest, and his chest starts kind of sloughing off, and you see him kind of fall on the ground prone as his whole body is starting to kind of uh, pulse or bubble or boil. You're not sure what's going on, but it's some bad shit. And this guy here, it travels up his hand, up to his arm. You see him start to scream and fall back, and then his arm falls off below the elbow. But now, can, can, I just rolled a history check just to try to understand this a little bit better. 
is this condition a curable thing? Can I, <laughs> could I, uh, uh, do I think that I could cauterize this uh, crazy wound that he has? Do, what, do I think I have anything that can help him more or less? Your knowledge of this is going to be limited to what the, Zer the Zerth shared with you guys when you guys first were at the tavern. Remember him coming in and talking to you? Yeah, he's the one that basically told you guys of these chaos pods that this thing that happens to them, that's what that lesser restoration or greater restoration is for. So you don't know if cauterizing it will work. He didn't say anything about that. Okay. Okay, so that's the crew on that ship. The crew on this ship. Ah, Silith. You'll actually see this guy here freaking out. And he shouts at one of the other guys over here. Something in Gith. And he moves a little closer over here. And then he shoots this uh, this ballista right in front of him. <laughs> uh, which one? This one? Uh, this one right here. The bottom one. Okay, okay. Okay. And just, poof, just shoots out there. And they're both freaking out. And they're pointing over here a little bit. And these guys are kind of turning their head around looking. You can't see what they're shooting at. But they fired their ballista. Uh... One sec, I gotta look where the other ones are. Do, do, do. Not there. Oh, and give me a perception, Silith. Show. So, does that real well? Perception, perception. Mm. You can hear a bunch of commotion in the deck below you as well. A bunch of guys shouting. And you can faintly hear the sound of another ballistae shooting below you as well. Sound of a what below me? Ballistae. These things right here. Okay. One fired below deck of you. Okay. Uh, the rest of the crew are all holding steady. Back over here to the knight on the skiff. He is going to step up within 10 feet, and try to grab that thing with the pole. God, these guys are rolling like shit. And he misses. Badly. And that's his turn. The grunts. Where do I have grunts? On deck. This guy had a pole right here. On the destroyer. So he's actually going to step off the side. Start walking down it. The rest of you guys lose visibility of him. This guy is going to come over to the side of the deck and start looking off the side of it, but stay on deck still. This guy is going to step off the deck. And you hear him. Uh, Tolman definitely hears him. I'll go and say Sylvia Nusul will hear it. You hear him scream something in, in uh, Gith as well. Okay, and that's it for the grunts. Tolman, what are you doing, buddy? I can't see anything, even if I look over the side of the ship. Which way are you looking? Straight down. Yeah, you can look straight down. Yeah, am I seeing anything around me at all? Give me a perception check. Ah, you're looking down, all you can see is the side of the boat and the chaos beyond. Okay, then I'm going to just move over to uh, this guy here that I heard yelling. Okay. Go ahead and move yourself. Double movement. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, is that as far as you can get right there? I can get right to the edge. Okay. Uh, I'll give you one more perception at disadvantage to look off the edge since you can make it that far. Nope. <laughs> Pretty good, but no, you can see the uh, the, the, the other gift is kind of in your way. You can see him kind of extending his little pole thing, but you can't see anything beyond that. Like he's just on the where the deck of the ship starts to curve under. Okay. All right, so these guys are up. Is not Diddy? Oh, did I skip Diddy? Is Diddy's turn? Oh, nope, they go before Diddy. Don't oh, see that. They're not, oh, they're not on the thing. Okay, got it. Yep, yep. 
yeah, they got a horrible initiative. So actually, this one right here, you guys see, so I'll go with him first. Uh, both within 10 feet, though. He can move 10 feet! So he's going to step up uh, to get in melee of the monk. And he's going to try to hit the, hit the damn thing, if he can. And they roll like shit, and they miss. Does he get more than one attack? Nope. But what he can do is take another... Because he was ten foot. That's his movement. He's actually going to occupy the same space as the monk. And, of course, the monk is dexterous as fuck. And he steps out of it. So, basically, it's it's right next to you now, Twig. As the monk kind of stepped back as this thing tried to occupy his space. Okay. Okay. And the other one... Oh, Dr. P already killed the other one and exploded all over everybody again, and he's killed the, the crew. <laughs> think that remains to be seen. <laughs> all right, so this one. Actually, okay, so now you will see this, uh, Tolman. You see as uh, the other guy was trying to capture the thing, you see it now appear and lunge towards the, uh, the gith first because he's actually closer to the gith than he is to you. God, look at my freaking rolls. This is a freaking awesome encounter, let me tell you guys. It's a pseudopod, not a real pod. <sighs> yeah, and he misses. But there again, he still has full movement. He's going to try to occupy the space of that grunt. Ooh! And you see him kind of wrap around the grunt's, uh, the grunt's feet. And you instantly hear the, 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 that, that grunt kind of scream something. And you can see his feet almost like starting to sizzle and smoke as this thing's kind of at his feet. And the other ones are, which you don't know, switch to GM layer. <laughs> uh, one more perception, Silith. Oh, man, seriously? All right, one more. Just Silith, though, not Diddy? Just Silith. All right, uh, switch to sheets again because I was at my spells. Uh, Boo it. Okay, that's good enough. You see, coming through the, the door over here... I'm sorry, I might be on the right layer, so you can actually see it. Coming through the opening where they just shot, you see one of the things kind of crawling through the opening right there. And I, it, know what I, wa I know what I want to do. <laughs> now, were you holding an action, or you were just moving, weren't you? I, I stopped there. I didn't... Yeah, okay. all I did was move. So. All right, so it's going to reach out and try to attack one of the, uh, the crew here. Hey, look at me. I can actually hit something. And it hit him on a... Oh, crap. I thought I had that in there. I guess I didn't. Reaches out and slaps him on the hand. You can see his hand starting to kind of bubble and sizzle. As it takes some damage. That's it for his turn. And the other one... You don't see or hear anything about that one. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, unbeknownst to you, something else is going on. Unbeknownst to Sylph, something else is... Yep, something else is going on, but you don't know. Cool. And then this one... One has sneaked into the bottom of your trousers. <laughs> I already have a scorch in my trousers. Don't need another one. <laughs> you do see this, though, Silith. One more pokes his head right through the center here. At the same time, that guy's going to shoot at disadvantage and misses. It's going to step through here and try to attack this guy. Hey, look at me. I can hit shit now. And there's no poles down here? I don't know what poles in there as I was sleeping. And he got hit. Ooh. He got hit right square in the chest. You can hear him kind of like the breath leaving him a little bit. I mean, he's he's uh he's hurt pretty bad. This one also took some damage. So I'll give him a token. Do 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 do. Make sure I got them all. Yep, I think that's all of them. All right, now it's Diddy's turn. All right, so Diddy's here in this ruckus. Uh, let me measure some distance here. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he's did he's making it right right there? Do, 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 do. So did he's it's I I can't make him go in the middle. He snaps to either side. Yep. Uh, your your token seemed to be fine, but did he snaps to either side? Um, do 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 do. So you can see when he goes out there, he sees that one there. I'm assuming. We're all perception for it. No. It, it's, no, it's, it's attacking. He'll see, he'll you can see, see it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and Diddy's got... Uh, hold on. Slam is with the shield, yeah? <laughs> Is it like a push or like a charge? What are you he, trying to he do? Doesn't, he doesn't have any of the text in here. I want I wanted him to try and like push it away with his shield, but okay. he doesn't have any of the he doesn't have any of the text in here. No, that'd be like a, an opposed uh, strength or dexterity check. If he wants to do that, try to shove or, or push a creature. Yeah, he wants to like basically. Uh, can can he push it back out? Which one's he, he going uh, for? The one right there. Okay. Yeah, I'll set a DC for it. Because he came from here, so. Actually, no, I'll... No, I almost said a DC it, for it, because it's not just against him. You're trying to finagle it back out the window, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, as okay. opposed to just bunting it. Right. Yeah, uh, so I almost said a DC for that. You're trying okay, to so basically, what are you to roll? Uh, strength or athletics. I'm assuming uh, that's going to be better in decks for him. Uh, I'm going to go with athletics. Okay. Uh... Oh! Yeah, you're able to push him, uh, I'll say, 10 feet. Back out the window with your Peace. shield. You're saying engage with him when you do that, so I moved you up there. Yeah, and then it. Uh, now, when I'm pushing it, does its, gra its gravity become relevant to me, or how's your gravity is relative to you? Okay, its gravity is relative to it. So it's not, it's not like now like free falling off the ship is what I was wondering. No, as you push it out there, you kind of watch it kind of back up a little bit, and it's still kind of grabbing hold of the sides of the ship and everything. Okay. I was thinking almost like a, like a shield bay where it goes outside the door, the window, and then all of a sudden it's now free falling away. But no, nope. it's not like space. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's that your was... action. Sorry, what was that? So Nothing. That... Sorry. So that's no. your action. Yep, yeah, that's the action, and then. Uh... Uh, that that thing there that he has is only yeah lesser restoration is only as an action so he's just gonna um, he's is his how big is the window? It's you you can fit through it. It's about the size of a regular you know door opening. This is door opening size. I will uh it's, it's, uh, he's used all his movement. I was gonna say he's he moved back away from the window, but uh, he's used all his movement. So he's uh. He's just going to be basically still blocking the window with his shield. Okay. All right. So that's okay. it for Diddy. Okay, that's Dr. P, back to you. Um, do I, based on what I've seen of these creatures and them kind of latching onto something, does it seem like you'd be able to scoop one of those things off of the pole if it was attached to something or something? Would you be able to scoop it off the pole if it was attached to something? Like, like so, would the monk be able to use his pole to scoop it off of a character that it was attached to? Is the question. Um, have you seen him attack with that thing yet? It, I'm I'm still picturing like the the uh, long pole that dog catchers use with the rope on it. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, that, that's a close proximity, but it's more like it's got fingers on it that kind of close and open, kind of like a Venus flytrap at the end of the it. The claw. Yeah. yeah. I, um. So. I, in my mind, it seems like it's doable. Um, so Dr. P, he's worried about twig safety and everybody else, and he obviously can't shoot in there. He's learned. So he's going to order a, Baymax, take that thing and get 15 feet off the boat. <laughs> take what things? So Baymax is actually going to try to roll into it, through it, and drag him with it. Can you do that? <laughs> On the spikes? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, go ahead and roll for an attack if you want to do that. That's fine. I'm going to bump his um, AC up since he's actually trying to grapple him, is what I'll do. Quick quick thing on that. Wasn't Baymax tied to you with a rope? No, not anymore. We learned that's oh. not necessary here. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, I, I remember something about that before. <laughs> uh, that's some good, good uh, rolling, Baymax. 
Alright, yeah, so he rolls right into him. You see the spikes kind of sink into it, and you see the, the thing kind of morph or polymorph all on the, the outside of it like it grows, but it like thins out, and it's all along one side of Baymax. <laughs> and Baymax is going to roll out into the uh, the abyss, huh? He's going he's gonna to roll out to like here, so hopefully the monk can, can scoop him up, you know? Um, that's the idea. Maybe like, like the monk can grab him off of Baymax. Okay, so cool. let me... Because you're giving him directions on, on to attack here, right? Correct. I'm okay. having Baymax uh, grab that thing and, and scoop it off the ship 10 feet. Okay. So, i got to figure out how I'm going to do this cause, because it's Baymax. He's a separate entity. Is he going to know how gravity works? What's his wisdom? One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's going to go strictly by what you say. So tell me how you're explaining to him to go off the ship. I keep rolling. I'm going to tell him roll 20 feet west through that creature. <laughs> okay. But not the monk. Not the monk. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Roll me a, uh, a D8, Dr. P. Okay. All right, so he goes rolling off the side of it with this thing intact, in tow on it. And then he starts to kind of fall or plummet in this direction. He had gravity within this 30 feet or something. He does, but his wisdom is one. <laughs> so you don't he know where he is. <laughs> so he's basically falling in that direction. Be careful, Baymax! <laughs> Oh, oh, shit. All right, anything else, Dr. P? Um, yeah, a couple things. Uh, how good would you say Dr. P would be with, a, like, a using a rope like a lasso <laughs> to hook up to, this, to the front of the ship up here? I don't know. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Yes, we will. Okay. All right, that'll so be So he moves to the, to the very, very front of the ship, like, on the spike. And he uh, quickly pulls his pack open and, and gets his rope out, you know, and, and uh, he starts to swing it over his head and he throws it down to, to loop onto Baymax in the creek. Okay, so remind me, because it's been a while since we've used Baymax, is, uh, is it your action to make him do something? Or does he have his own initiative and in action? Um, it's He normally has a default, but when I told him to do something, that was, that was one of my two actions. Okay. But right now, with being hasted, I have reactions okay well, okay kind of sort of you know what i mean yep okay all right i'll allow that then so you're going to try to hastily make a, a lasso or a rope or something and sling it towards uh baymax correct correct okay so should i just roll like a dart attack or something like that with the, <sighs> to hit with the rope it's not going to be something you're proficient at because you don't really attack with a rope so i'm going to make it either a dex or an acrobatics uh, check for you. Okay, we'll do we'll do acrobatics. It's fine. Okay, so you reach out the rope. You're not sure if you how good of a knot you got, but you kind of it hits Baymax as he's going by, and then we'll resolve that on your next turn about what happens. Okay, I, I want to tie it off real quick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm tying it off. All right. All right. All right, so that's it for you then, right? Correct. Okay. All right, Usul. Okay. I'm going to uh, reach into my bag of tricks and uh, throw a, an animal up onto the deck up here and order it to protect. Okay. That's a random thing, or you get to choose it? I always forget. It's a random thing, and uh, looks like I've got a baboon. A baboon. So I'm just going to send him up there to monitor that area. Okay, I think you have control over that. You can confirm for me real quick if you don't mind. Yep, yep. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to continue monitoring my sector uh, over in this direction. Okay, are you like sticking your head over the side, looking down it, or are you just looking out straight up into the abyss? Hell no! That's dangerous. <laughs> So you're just looking out into the abyss, right? That's correct. Okay, give me a perception. 
Oh! Hey, hey. Look at you! Alright, so... Let me look over here. If I had anything over there. Alright, so this is what you see with that awesome perception check. A freaking crit, crit roll. You see something kind of appear. Let me do some arrows. That would make it more realistic. See something kind of streaking just right on the edge of the border here. Can you see where my arrow is? Kind of briefly appear and then disappear. And okay. with that with that perception, you can tell it's more chaos pod just kind of falling through the chaos. And you see about a, right. se a second behind that, you see what looks like some kind of a large tentacle kind of reach out into this area. And then kind of like it's trying to scoop back in this direction, almost like it's trying to catch that chaos pod. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell everybody what I just saw. <laughs> okay. So, so tell, tell me what you're saying. Um, more pods over here. Looks like something's trying to grab them. Tentacles. Okay. Is that it for your turn, Asul? That's it. Okay, back over to the monk. On the skiff. What was my monk doing? Can the monk call for his buddies who are doing nothing down below, like twiddling their thumbs? Well, these two are controlling the ship. Oop, how about I click? You don't know this, but these two are controlling the ship. And actually, you know what? This guy, I should have had him in the initiative order, so my fault. Let me do that real quick. Ooh. I meant so, to call down to him, like, you got some people you need to lesser restaurant. <laughs> Yep, so I'll retcon that. I'll bring him up here, and he approaches these two, and he, has that, he does that exact same thing. Matter of fact, it's been a couple rounds, I think, since that happened. No, it's only been one round since they you know, they got attacked on one round. They suffered, so it has been two rounds. So he come up here, and you see him he'll cast uh, a spell onto this one right here. That's the one that lost, I think, part of his arm, as I recall. And you can see the where the, the thing was moving into his chest. You see it kind of start, slowly kind of melt back into a normal form but he still has like a stub for for an arm where his elbow was on this one right here and that was the Zerst turn on that one now the monk he's does not have that ability and he's gonna hop back over the side here and take a look around but he's still within the eyesight of twig that's his turn Okay, back over on the he destroyer. Baymax swinging? Couldn't he go for Baymax? Uh, he doesn't know what the hell Baymax is. <laughs> I'm not sure what the fuck it is. Yeah, let me look at his character sheet. I'll, I'll help you out here a little bit, maybe, if he can do anything. So hold, please. Got to pull up his character sheet. What can the monk do? Hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. Are you screaming or yelling for someone to save Baymax, <laughs> Dr. P? <laughs> well, I figured he would have seen Baymax, like, take one for the team, take the creature out, and just kind of float off into nowhere and Dr. P trying to lasso him. <laughs> I don't know if he would still perceive the creature as a threat, but if that's his whole goal with the pole, he either right. needs to give that pole to Twig or, or use it. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll Wisdom. I'm not going to tell you what this is for, but I'm going to roll a Wisdom check, and I'll let that decide what he does here. Uh, okay, it's not the GM, so it should be public. Okay, so he senses that this thing is some value to you oh shit this is like suicide for him <laughs> maybe is this literally do you lose gravity if you leave the ship by within five feet or something and i just wasn't aware well you won't lose it you can make your your gravity relative but if you make your gravity relative to the ship when you're 60 feet away that's like falling 60 feet but you know what with that being said the monk is fine with that so he's actually going to, <laughs> you see him leap off the ship, gets over on the other side of this guy, and he's going to, oh shit, 
Oh, he, he had the pole, didn't he? Yes, he's got the pole. Yes, he has the pole. There's the saving grace. Okay, so he gets within <laughs> 10 feet and he's going to try to scrape catch this thing off of Baymax. <laughs> if he can. Oh, I'll do something in the open. This is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Why did it do it twice? You're the worst monk ever. No, he got a twenty on it. That's what I'm seeing. No, oh, that's a wisdom. Sorry, that's a different one. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he fail. got a twenty, Brian. I think he got a twenty. <laughs> yeah. So he's he seems like he's he's floating out here in space. He's not really falling. He's got the feather fall thing. You realize that now? But he's trying to scrape this thing off of Baymax, not getting within melee range of it. But he's basically falling through space with uh, with Baymax right now. <laughs> Grab the rope! <laughs> okay, that's his turn now. Wow, that was that was fun. Okay, Sylvia, you're up next. Sylvia, you there? Uh, Mike's muted. There yeah. he goes. <laughs> so, um, so let me see here. Um, I don't really see that going on over there. And uh, I'm just going to sort of move a bit over here and or I'm going to move up to here and get uh, a blast ready in case anything comes within uh, up here with the baboon and the the gith. OK. So you're writing out what action? Uh, Firebolt. Firebolt. OK. All right. All right. Silith, back down below. What are you doing? All right, uh, is do, 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 do. busting out with uh, let's see, uh, this is an extra bonus action. That is a bonus action, which means you can do you can do a bonus action twice, right? No, one bonus action oh. per turn. Oh, you can't do an, a bonus action as a re- using your regular action as well. Nope, can't do that. Oh darn, that's unfortunate. All right, so uh, Sylla's going to go ahead and uh, throw out a Sacred Flame on the one closest to him. Okay. Well, the other one's outside the window, right? right? Correct. And he doesn't say nothing else seemed to have snuck by him, as you noticed. So uh, he's going to... Boop! DC 16, dexterity save. Okay, so you see the thing kind of sizzle a little bit, but you don't see any change whatsoever on its form. Okay, so no real changes. Uh, and then Sil is going to go ahead and um, he's going to sanctuary himself. Okay, go and give me a wisdom check as well, Sil. A wisdom check? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not. Oh, oops. <laughs> I'm clicking on uh, on Diddy's page too. There we go. What's the? Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The gif is like saying something back to you in some weird language, but you can't understand what he's saying. Okay. Cool. cool. Silith has sanctuary, and now he's gonna move, and he's going to interpose himself, all holy like, in between. The creature and the gif. Okay, so I'm going to give you some kind of weird token thing just so I can remember you got something going on. Sanctuary. Cool. Okay, is that it for Silas' turn? Yep. All right, Twig. Okay. Twig, having seen the monk get out there to Baymax, follows suit. Like You're jumping? Thing. Yep. Okay, so jump over by the rope. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Where? What are you using for your relative gravity right now, Twig? Um, probably the Baymax. <laughs> Baymax, which has the little monster thing on it, right? Yes, the far the far side of Baymax. Okay. So you're jumping off the ship and then you can try to land on the on Baymax, correct? Correct. Okay. 
Give me an athletics or acrobatics check first, please. Mm. All right, so as you jump, you kind of, as you're in midair, you change your, your sense of gravity to be towards Baymax. And you don't quite land on your foot like hits one of the spikes, but you're about five feet from it right now. You don't quite land on it. But you're, you feel your gravity kind of slowing around like almost like getting ready to orbit Baymax, but you're not on it, if that makes sense. But did I get to the other side of Baymax? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now he'll take his axe and throw it at Baymax, so Baymax starts going back toward the ship. <laughs> okay. So you're using your axe to knock him back the other direction? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an attack with advantage. Okay. There you go. So he slams into Baymax with his axe. And actually, let me do a... Since the other thing's on him. You actually hit part of the uh, uh, the pod thing as well. Wow, nine points of damage. So half to him. Half to him, half to Baymax. So four okay. each is what I'm going with. You slam your, your axe into it, but Baymax just keeps going the same direction. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, I can't help but think the whole purpose of getting the creature away from you guys uh, <laughs> is backfiring terribly on me. Now we're in a worse predicament. Yeah, and Twig, you can see you're probably about five feet away from some molten magma on the outside of the uh, the bubble uh, near the yeah, ship. Okay. Okay. Didn't you say we all have our own personal bubble based on how our um, uh, whatever we had? Ah, that's a good point. You can do that, but he hasn't reached that point yet. So, we'll cross that bridge if and when he gets to that point. Right now, he's in a safe zone. <laughs> All right. So, that's it for you, Twig. Anything else? Twig? Um, uh, you know what? He'll throw the other axe, too. <laughs> you're throwing it, or you're just attacking with it? Throwing it. Okay, because you're within melee range if you want to do that. Oh, well, I can, well, then I'll attack with it. Try to okay. bat Baymax back to the right direction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see it again. All right, so... It doesn't hit Baymax, but it might hit the creature. <laughs> yeah, it hits the creature, because he can't get out of the way. He's just kind of wrapped around Baymax here. So you see he kind of smack into it, and one of his little tentacles kind of writhe off, and, and it kind of disappear into the, the chaos below, but it's still... It's, it's looking pretty bad. A little bits and pieces of it are left, but Baymax continues to kind of go in the same direction. Then he'll yell at Baymax, back to the ship! <laughs> That's all I can do. All right, so the crew's are, are up. You still on, you're still on, on Baymax? Uh, I didn't quite make it. Oh, yeah. So Baymax is, is lassoed, right? I mean, he, I want him as a swinging ball of death to protect him <laughs> the front of the ship. That was the whole goal. I want him to capture like 10 of these creatures on him, yep. and then he will please me. <laughs> Okay, we'll cover that when we get to his uh, your turn. Is when I'll, I'll finish off his, his resolution there as well. Sorry, go ahead. All right, so this this guy is missing one arm. And he kind of crawls his way back uh, behind this guy. Uh, this guy is going to kind of look. Ooh, he's got to make another save. Oh, so he got hit in the head, went to his torso, and now it's starting to travel down one arm. And this guy is turning into a big glob of, of mess. Falls to the ground. And screaming something. He doesn't even have, have a mouth left, but he's still screaming for for someone to help him. That's over on the uh, the skiff. Sorry. I guess you guys are wondering who the hell I was talking about. Now back over in the destroyer. Did I have any? Yeah, I got all kinds of crew. Nobody uh, got hit so far on this one, did though? Okay, so on the upper deck, all these guys here are going to kind of just hold pat, not doing anything. Down below deck, Silith is the only one that sees this. And Diddy, I guess. Um, <laughs> these guys are all confused. Should they fire? Should they not? They can't fire. That thing's got to reload in two more turns. But uh, the other guys will go across and start uh, two-person two manning this one. This one didn't fire, did it? The one in front of... No, I was rolling for oh. the one on Diddy first. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, that one hasn't fired yet. So... Actually, did that one fire already on the previous turn? Uh, I thought only this one did. 
Okay, all right, so I'll rule they they fire that one. So I need to make a... <laughs> all right, so this is pretty cool. So they fire the ballistae, this, this thing's sitting like right on top of it. And you see like three quarters of the thing just get flung right out the window. Whoop! <laughs> Little bits and pieces of it are left, but it's it's not moving. But that thing gets shot out the window. And so do you watch as it just kind of disappears into the uh, uh, the abyss beyond. Sweet. Theoretically, it would be actually flying towards the um, the skiff. Oh, no, the skiff was in front. Yeah, skiff's like, wait, wait, I'm not sure where the skiff is. You guys haven't seen it yet. Yeah, theater of the mind, theater of the mind. Yep. Uh, okay, where else do I have crew? Where are these guys? That was the one that did that. So... You hear a lot of... Give me another perception check, so let's see if you hear more of the commotion. So Silth or Silth and Diddy? Diddy's here too now. Silth and Diddy. Alright, Silth is... Bing, and Diddy is... Uh, Bing. And as a matter of fact, Sylvia can give me a perception check as well. She may hear this. Alright, so Sylvia, Silith, and Diddy, I guess, whichever one was which. All three guys here, there's more shouting and screaming from uh, down below. Sylvia, you can hear it coming off this side of the ship over here, to your to the right of the screen. But you can hear some shouting coming from something down below over here as well. A bunch of gifts sc- uh, yelling and, and shouting. So that's it for that one. Do those guys nothing... Okay, that's it for the crew. <laughs> the knight is going to kind of run up the side of the ship over here. Well, as you guys are all falling out of thing, I don't think the knight can do shit. <laughs> he can't fly like you guys. And uh, He's within 10 feet. Huh? Uh, he's within 10 feet. Hey, he's got the pole. All right, so it's going to be at disadvantage. So you reach out with this pole around the edge, you kind of clips Baymax on one of his spikes, but can't get purchase on anything out there. And that's it for his turn. And the grunts are next. The grunts are this guy. Back over by Toman. Ah! He grabs a hold of it with a pole. Within 10 feet, he's got to hold this thing, Toman. You watch as he, he triggers the thing, and the, the thing is now trapped inside the little finger grips on it. And he kind of holds it out 10 feet away from you as well, out in the space. And you see him like he's getting ready to kind of chuck it out into uh, out into space. But he hasn't done that yet. Uh, this guy is going to step off the edge. Looks around. And he can see. Yeah, I guess that technically, Tolman, you can see this as well. You can see down below where that uh, uh, Diddy pushed that thing back out of the opening right here. That makes sense. You can see that yeah. thing down below you. Okay. It's, that's probably at least ten feet down. Uh, actually, no. That's only about. Man, yeah, I'll say ten feet down to get to it. And that's what this guy's going to see. But he doesn't have a pole, so he doesn't want to touch the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy's going to. Ooh, he sees one too. He's going to run down a level. And he'll show up over here in the lower deck. And then he's going to try to grab. Uh, no one else can see it except for him. So you don't know what he's doing. And you hear Sylvia. You hear a little bit of, like, you're not sure if it's shouts for joy, shouts for pain, something off of that side. And that's it for the grunts. Toman, you're up next, buddy. What are you doing? Well, I have a pole. Can I grab the uh, thing that just came out of the portal below uh, me? And do what the other gith is doing? You can try. It's just a straight-up dex check. It's not something you're proficient with. I'll just let you do a dex check. That's good enough. So you're able to capture this one within your... I'm going to move you to down there just so I know you're there. I don't get confused with myself. Okay. That's okay. So I'm assuming you'll get within 10 feet of it. But you're able to kind of capture the thing inside the pole. And that's your action to do that. It's another action to toss it. That's what the other guy was going to do as well. All right, I'm going to basically wait till the other guy tosses it so I can see how it's done, and then I'll just mimic his move. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So, anything else for Tolman? That will do it. Okay, so these guys are out, the bad guys. So let's start down with Tolman first, since that's where our focus is. You see things start to kind of transform, almost like it's trying to split up in between the fingers of this thing. But as it's making this thing, you kind of shake it a little bit, like you're watching the other grunt do it, and it's not able to break free from this little cage you've got it in right now. So did the cage just kind of like hit against Diddy's shield when he grabbed it, or...? Well, Diddy was just kind of blocking, keeping it from coming in, was my understanding. So it was, like, actually out here. Okay, okay, yeah, like, did he push it through? Like, I was assuming Diddy's shield was the window now? Correct. Essentially? Yep, that's why I rolled so, up, yep. Okay. All right, so you still have this one in your grasp of your little pole contraption thing, uh, Tolman. He did not break free. Um, the one over here that you guys don't see, he is trapped as well. And he is still trapped. Alright, so I'm going to put him out on the layer just so you guys see him, even though you don't really know where he is. Uh, layer, token layer. So this one over here, guys, if you see where I'm pinging, oh, it'll help if I was on the right layer. Right here. That guy's actually yeah. trapped by that uh, grunt up above it. I'm going to move that grunt down here just so we know which one he's tied up with. So he doesn't escape. Where's my other one's at? Where are my homies at? Oh, yeah, the one over here with the, the first one that got caught. <laughs> and he's trapped as well. Damn it. All my guys are trapped. Where's my other one at? <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys haven't found that one yet. Uh, Sylvia, give me a perception check. <laughs> All right, so you see this one crawling over the side over here. And that's as far as it gets. It's starting to roll right over the edge over here. So you okay, and I'll use my ready action to, to blast it. Yep, let's see it. Oh! I think he, what, AC in these guys? I forget. They don't have AC. Why would they have AC? Uh, they don't. The AC is horrible, so you still hit them. <laughs> 25 fire, right? Yep. All right, so you watch your, your firebolt just slam right into this thing, and you see it kind of shudder a little bit, almost like it's like, you know, you, you kind of give it the chills, but you don't see any damage whatsoever on it. Damn. Okay, that's it. Brian? Yep. Just because just the way you said that, you know my damage was radiant, not flame, when uh, that last one, right? When Sel did the sacred flame? You asked me to nope. do a wisdom check after, but okay. <laughs> Just so nope. it was. All right, so that's my fault. No, I missed that. So what was the damage on that one then? It was 10 radiant. Okay, and that was on the one that got shot mm. out the window. The one that got shot out the window. Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, so yeah, that would have done some damage to it. But yeah, just that's just reference. I didn't figure it would have really hurt it because I saw the the when uh, Twig hit that one earlier and hit it for twelve, and I only hit for ten. So yep, just okay. just for reference. Okay, so and the last one here is this guy. Oh, what the hell is he gonna do? <sighs> All right, so this one that's wrapped around Baymax, he basically removes himself from Baymax and starts falling back towards the ship. So that means a attack of opportunity if you want to take it for Baymax, Twig, the Monk, and the Knight. <laughs> Don't the Monk and the Knight have the poles? They do. Who's higher in the uh, turn order? Twig swings. I don't care. It's whoever whoever rolls. So Twig took the first one. Eight. <laughs> oh! And hits it. <laughs> oh, shit. He got, a, he got an eight. Eight doesn't hit. Eight does hit. For half, da for, for half damage. <laughs> those are ma those are magic axes. If that okay. helps. Yep. So I, I just got to do my my half damage here. All right. So he swipes at it, and another little tentacle thing just kind of goes flying off into the abyss as it continues to kind of fall towards the uh, the ship, but it is still intact. Anybody else take an opportunity attack? 
Baymax doesn't know which way is up, so he's not going to. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the monk is not going to take an opportunity attack, but he is going to try to use his pole thing with a disadvantage. And misses, and the knight is going to do the same thing. And they both miss as it starts plummeting back towards the uh, uh, the ship here. Okay. Uh, Diddy. What are you doing, buddy? Uh, all right, all right. Wait, Diddy? Yep, Diddy's up. Oh, jeez. Mm, do do do. Diddy, uh, so now Diddy does not have this one here. Like, it's not against Shield anymore. It's uh, grappled, for lack of a better term. He's not grappled. He just pushed no. right outside of the thing, but he is grappled by Tolman's uh, uh, pole yeah, that, thing. Sorry, that's what I mean. Is, uh, it's it's not like against Diddy shielding. Diddy can freely move. As far as can, he knows, can, yeah. Can Diddy see Tolman, or does no. Diddy can see like the pole grabbing it? Yeah, he can see something reached out and grabbed a hold of it. All right, so Diddy's going to back off, and uh, uh, ten feet. All right. he's going to go over to this dude who's uh, what's what's wrong with this guy again exactly? He got hit in the arm, was it or? Yeah, he got it hit. Yeah, I didn't write it down, but yeah, I think he got hit in the arm. That sounds right. Um, uh, no face melting, right. like flesh uh, flying off yep. or anything yet. <laughs> Correct. That's what happened to his arm. Is is his arm still on? It's melting away. All right, so that's that's when the Diddy's gonna be like, they told us to uh, to beware of this, and he's gonna try and do a lesser, lesser restoration on this guy's arm. Okay. So he's obviously gonna accept that. There's no thing, nothing for him to roll, but I do add another thing that you've cured him. And you watch as the the melting kind of stops a little bit. He's got a little bit of stub there, like where his wrist is, but it seems to have stopped spreading. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Diddy? Uh, he's gonna move up close towards Sylph and be like, "I think there's more below." <laughs> I, I don't do the accent. Sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> okay. All right. That it for Diddy. That is it for Diddy. Okay. So next up, I need who else on that side? Usul, um, Toman, and. Actually, yeah, Dr. P and Twig, I'll give me perception checks. Damn. <laughs> that actually is pretty bad for you, so shit. All right, so a little bit of fear of the mind, so bear with me, guys. So the skiff is now turned completely around. And look over here on the far left of the destroyer guys. I'll kind of use the the, the, the pointer thing. The skiff is, is coming back towards it. And relative to the skiff, it's like right on the outskirt of the edge of the chaos right here as well. Where you guys are seeing the, the, the skiff kind of going in that direction. Does that make sense? You guys all see my arrow I'm doing there? Yeah, yeah. so it's coming so, backwards and it's basically intercepting. Right. So Usul, uh, Toman... You two are the two that notice that. Uh, either the destroyer coming to your view or the skiff coming to your view, depending on your, your vantage point uh, on, on what's going on here. Okay? And then on the other side, we have Sylvia. Uh, Silith, yours is going to be at a disadvantage because you're inside. Diddy's not going to see it from there. Yep, that's it. So I mean, Sylvia and uh, Silith at disadvantage, a perception check. Uh, Still, so on the wrong side too, eh? Uh, you're looking at this on the right side, Silith. I'm looking out on the right to see the ship, the other ship. Looking, I'm I'm rolling if you see something outside the ship over here. Oh, right. I thought you were talking about seeing the other skiff. No, on this side of the oh. ship is something else. Yeah, okay. great, giant tentacle murder death. So, okay, cool. So Silith roll disadvantage, so you don't see it, but Silith. I mean, sorry, Sylvia, you do see, you saw the uh, the thing get, I guess, punted or shot out in this direction from down below and disappear into the chaos. You see another one of those chaos pods kind of poke its head right through the edge here. But then you see a tentacle reach out and grab it and then pull it back into the chaos. 
Okay. That's it for that one. Um, also top of the round. No, it'll be on their turn. Never mind. All right, Dr. P. Now we need to resolve this thing. So you got the rope partially around Baymax. Um, I want Baymax to give me a... He probably doesn't have anything like athletics or acrobatics, does he? Does a skill? Is that correct, Dr. P? He's got... So his strength's decent. So, I mean, I just rolled a, a strength check for... Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay, so you see as, as the rope goes off, you see Baymax kind of wrap his whole body around it. So he does... He, you do, now got the rope kind of wrapped around Baymax at this point. As he just starts to get right on the edge of this... Got it. Oh, you're so glad I rolled. You're so lucky I rolled low. You can see the the rope starting to kind of sizzle and burn and turn black as it's right on the edge there. But that's as far as uh, Baymax gets. He's right on the edge of that 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 bad shit right there. Can he just come back? I'm I'm trying to <laughs> kind of wrap my head around this. Uh, his wisdom is only one, so he's not going to okay. understand this relative gravity thing. All right, so Professor P on his turn. So that Baymax, Baymax got get the rope, or got, has the rope around him. Uh, Professor P is really gonna tighten that that rope up, and he's he's gonna use his enhanced speed to to really wrap that rope real tight, so it's only got like a ten foot uh, worth of room on it around that bowsprit that he's standing on. So just so I'm clear, you're trying to tie that rope around the front of that ship and keep it taut. Correct. I mean, Professor P will straight up run around the thing like a little hamster wheel uh, <laughs> to, to get that rope tight. Uh, okay. He's got a good sixty feet of movement to do so with his with his haste. So he, he really reels in that rope and then he ties it off. Um, but he's still got an action left and he has kind of a plan in mind. Okay. So give me a give me a acrobatics check first to see how well you are at running around a pole with this new type of gravity that you're experiencing. Oh, he's very skilled. Okay, that's fine. So you wrap yourself was, around it two, or three, four this. times. This is his mission in life. <laughs> it's a destiny, right? It's his destiny. Okay. All right, so he, he gets the rope and he wraps it around. I mean, he's running around like a little hamster. He wheels in Baymax. Baymax now has like a 10-foot, 15-foot leash somewhere in that area. And uh, he, he ties it off. And then he, he has this ingenious idea. And we get to experience a trap for the first time. Okay. He, uh, he puts an entangling trap at the front of the bowsprit, and then he moves back to stand next to the face-melted guy. <laughs> okay. How's it going? The idea being, the next creature that comes within a 20-foot radius, which very likely will be Baymax, uh, it will trigger this massive entangling of, of crazy vines that spray in all directions and, and hold all creatures in place. Okay, so where are you actually placing this trap? Right on the very tip there. Okay, so basically where the, where the rope the beats it, right? Yep, so it's got a 20-foot radius, so it misses, the, like, it just barely catches the front of the ship, but <laughs> okay. if gravity's, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> so if Twig or anybody it gets in that thing, then they'll just get caught at the bowsprit, which is what the trap's attached to. Okay, okay, all right, I'm with you. That's it. Okay, so he already moved. Vamex did. He's right at the edge there. That was your turn. So Usul, what do you do next, buddy? Uh, you know, I'm gonna do uh, more of the same. You is that uh, skiff still fall or uh, coming by me? Can you see it right on the edge out there on the edge of it? It's kind of going that direction like I was doing. But remember, you you also saw this. Uh, that other thing across the boat, crawl over the edge, right? No, you didn't see it. Sylvia did. Did we roll for perception right. on that? I did see that. Okay, all right. Yeah. And is this an enemy thing right there? That's one of the chaos pods, yep. All right. I guess I'll just uh, take a shot at that with my bow. Okay, let's see it. Ooh, that's a horrible shot. <laughs> goes right off the side into the abyss behind it. 
All right, anything else for Rasul? Uh, yeah, I'm going to order the, uh, since that, uh, I can't even remember what it is. Uh, the baboon? baboon doesn't do anything, anything helpful. I'm going to order it to attack that chaos bot. Okay, and what's its movement speed? Uh, that's a good question. Let's check here. Well, even if it's 20, he'll get wrapped in it, to the edge of it. Okay. So, uh, come on, come on. It is 30 feet. Okay. Yeah, he can reach it. Yeah. I'm just going to have it. Uh... Okay, roll an attack for it. Okay. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that definitely hits. Go move him up there. I'll move him for you. So here comes r rolling across, kind of bounces past uh, Sylvia down the stairs and bashes into yeah. it with his fist. Give me a deck save for your uh, ape. Deck save. I was actually uh, thinking it, he was just going to barrel into it and, and Take the whole thing off, off the side of the ship if it can. Oh, so he wasn't attacking; he was trying to grapple it. Is what I, is what I'm hearing there. Yep, yep, that'll work. Okay, so we're not get rid of that, uh, that bite. So it's going to be your opposed dex or strength versus this thing's opposed dex or strength. Okay. I'm assuming his dex is going to be better than his strength. So I'll take that roll yeah. right there. Yep. And then these things have. Some pretty bad abilities, as I recall. Okay, say goodbye to your baboon. He, the baboon, and this chaos pod go <laughs> under the side, and there's no deck safe for this now. So you hear your baboon start to kind of wail. As you can see, this thing kind of envelop or kind of almost engulf the baboon as they both go jumping, go flying off the side of it. Good trade. Okay, so he had 30 feet of movement, so I got, I'm really only going to get about 5 feet off the off the deck right there until his next turn to finish the momentum. All right. Okay. Uh, That's why you have to summon your own friends, man. <laughs> <laughs> they just disappear into nothing anyways after the fact. But... Um, and I'll go ahead and uh, take a good look over on this side to see if uh, I can see anything still. Okay. Or that, again. That'd be in your next turn. You already took uh, your your action and a bonus action to move your thing, so that'll be in your next turn to okay. look at something. I'm good then. All right. So the Healy guy, good timing. He'll step up and cast it onto this guy right next to uh, Dr. P here. And that guy will start to kind of heal a little bit. Although he's on the ground and got part of an arm missing and a big hole in his chest and half his face is gone. Not sure if he's going to be a, uh, alive when it's done, but it stopped spreading. And that's his turn. The monk out here in space. <laughs> oh, shit. So he sees the chaos thing kind of break free from the... Uh, Baymax float it the other way, and both of them missed it with their things. He's got the pole in one hand, twig floating next to him. Ah, shit. All right, so he's gonna twig. What are you holding in your hand right now? Your axe. An axe. All right, so. <laughs> and axe, but an axe. Here's what he's gonna do. He's going to try to. Catch you with his pole thing. <laughs> Since you're a small little gnome, it's gonna be straight up. Are you gonna like? Are you gonna contest this? Or are you gonna let him try to catch you? I don't know yet. Let's see what what Twig does. Just saying, I'm gonna determine whether I roll with advantage or disadvantage. Why I'm asking. Yeah, let me roll a uh, a wisdom check here and see what he uh, actually does. Twig should take that pole from that guy. 
<laughs> yeah, he's going to allow it. Okay. All right, so with advantage, as long as I hit your AC, I guess. Oh, it would help if I pick on the right guy. Screw it, I just do it offline. Yeah, no problem. It's like a 23 or something. All right, so he's got you in that thing, and you see him start to kind of, he looks back towards the ship, and you both start to kind of slowly fall back in this direction. And it's, Featherfall is 30 feet or 60 feet? I forget. I gotta look it up. Sorry, guys, hold on. Featherfall. 60 feet per round. Alright, so that works out well. Alright, so both you and he kind of float back onto the uh, top of the shift. Uh, he still has some movement left because he's a freaking monk. And he does it again. He leaps <laughs> out into space and gets to about right here. He releases you. Uh, yeah, releases you out of the... Ah, uh, it's going to be a bonus action. So he leaves the, the pole with you on the deck there with you. He doesn't have the pole anymore, but he leaps back out into space. That's it for his turn. Okay. Warrior Shrala. Uh, this guy's got it in his grasp. She's just going to run up here and stay within 10 feet. She's got her pole ready, just in case. That's her turn. Sylvia, you're up. Excellent. So Time to destroy. Um, so seeing that... Uh, how far away is that? Is this thing? Just like you got there. He only went about five or ten feet off the side of the ship. Okay. And that baboon's on it, which I don't really care about. <laughs> um, no, you got to lasso him. Get him back like uh, Dr. P's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, from this vantage point, you guys can probably see that. Like right around here is where you'll see like, uh, you know, Baymax with like some kind of a rope tangled around him <laughs> getting pulled back over. And in this area is, is also... Not chaos. You can actually see the ship because it has a you know bubble of air around it as well. So you have a full view okay. of the ship and everything that's going on over here. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna ray of frost. See if that works. Uh, this thing. Okay. Let's see the attack. Yeah. With the baboon, right? Oh, look at that shit! All right, uh, give me a deck save for the baboon at disadvantage, Usul. All right. I gotta find it here. Deck save with advantage. No, not with advantage, with disadvantage. Ah, sorry. That yeah. first roll. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your baboon takes half of that damage. So half of 22 takes 11 points of damage. I didn't think that baboon was still uh, alive. <laughs> it's only got three hit points, so it's completely... All right, Sylvia, give, me a, per give me a perception check. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. You watch as your frost hits both the baboon and that whatever it is, and you see that yeah. uh, that pod thing almost like embrace the cold. Don't see any kind of damage whatsoever on that thing from the cold. Okay. Um, not seeing it take any damage, I am going to uh, run downstairs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. To where I heard the screaming. So I'm, like, on the stairs going down to the level below. Okay. Yeah, and you would have heard screaming off of the side of the ship, too, down below as well. There's, like, a, uh open window somewhere around here, I guess, for one of the cannons. But, yeah, you would have Yeah, heard... but I'm not a monk, and I'm not a, yep. a kung fu master. I'm going to jump down the side of the ship. Come on, Brian. <laughs> okay. Don't okay. try and trick me like that. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's your... <laughs> So that's your full movement, or are you going down a level? Do you have enough room to move it to go down a level? Uh, I have enough to to just be at like midway down the stairs right. or down the stairs, right, however you want to rule it. You can move yourself over here for right now. Okay. Do you run pinging? Uh, 
Hang on, let me just zoom out the map. Basically to your left. Okay. Yeah, ping, ping where? Okay, yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, so that's it for your turn? Yep. Okay, Silith. All what, right. Watch the thing disappear into the abyss in front of you. Foof, <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> uh, Silith's going to head down. Uh, he heard the rocks down, and Diddy warned him, so Silith's so uh, moving down. And uh, that's 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, so what, what does he see? Um, give me a perception check to see if you even notice that thing out there. Nope. <laughs> but you do see these guys all pointing. All the Gith crews kind of pointing out this window over here. You don't see it, but they're pointing over there. All right, but there's nothing in the in the ship. No, nothing okay. in the ship. Nope. nope. I meant, is there one in there? Am I not seeing it? Is there one right here? Or am I blind? I don't see one there. I... Unless there's one on your layer that you're not telling us about. Ah. Okay, let me fix that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, there is one right there. No, no so need for a perception check there. You see that one right away. All right, all right. Uh, so it's down here. And... Oh, jeez. What's he got here? What's he got here? He's currently under the effects of Sanctuary for another ten rounds. Well, nine rounds plus this one. So uh, he, they're too close. He's not. I don't want to touch it. Uh, he's gonna. Oh jeez. He's gonna. He's gonna try and gesticulate and uh, like wave the the gift back, or the the gift back. So you're just gesturing for the guys to get back. And like kind of like hollering at him, like move back, move back. Okay. Give me a uh, persuasion check at disadvantage since you don't speak gif. At disadvantage, you say. Yep. Sure. Oh, shit. All right, so you start screaming at something, making the hand gestures is what gets them, and they're all, like, <laughs> looking at you like, well, duh, yeah, we should get away. But uh, as these two back up, it gets an opportunity to attack on one of them. Thirteen. What are these guys? Are they, sh are they sucky for AC? Oh, they're actually not too bad. So it reaches out, try to hit one of them, misses. Rest of them are all kind of moving back as well with your awesome persuasion roll, moving away from mm -hmm. all the ballistae. Um, can still fire ballistae? Or it, was it two people to fire or two people to load? Uh, both. Oh, darn. All right, so it's uh, so it's closest one to it, and so it's under sanctuary. So okay, uh, yeah, well, let's have it waste all its attacks if possible. Um, there, yeah, so that's it for yourself. Okay. Twig is up next. What's Twig gonna do? Twig runs to the railing where he can swing into the thing again and attacks it with his axes. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright, that first one's all it takes. <laughs> so as soon as you hit it, it just, boom! It explodes. In about a ten foot aura here. And I need uh, you, the knight, and the monk. Where, uh, Dr. P, just get out of the way. And the poor guy on the ground that just got healed. I need to make deck saves. <laughs> Start screaming again. <laughs> Dex. Keep in mind I have a plus nine, guys. I rolled a 15. I got a 15. That's still good enough. You just got to be a 12. I know, but still, that's sad. Oh, crap. That's whispered to me. You rolled a 20. And the poor guy on the ground. Oh, shit. Even with disadvantage, he rolled a 14. So he's able to kind of roll out of the way. So anyway, everyone that got a 12 or higher was able to avoid did, this did thing. Did he roll into Professor P and knock him over? <laughs> no, I'm not going to roll that. That'd be cool. He just kind of grabs some of it and slings it at Dr. P. Part of his arm comes off. <laughs> No, but it basically explodes to several pieces and kind of dissipates into the chaos below. Oops, I marked the knight as being dead. That's not right. All right, anything else for Twig? Nope. OK, 
Okay, the Gith crew. This guy is going to roll back a little bit more after making his save. Ooh, he's not looking good at all. I thought he was just healed. He was, but <laughs> he's got half an arm missing. He got healed a little bit, but he's just not, he's just <laughs> not able to move very good. into his chest. Yeah, exactly. He's trying to say something, but he has no tongue, no lower jaw. Uh, where's the crew? Anybody else he's the just crew? licking his nipple. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> if he had one. Okay, what else the other crew? Oh, yeah, down here. So this guy got healed. The lower deck. And that guy is trapped, so he's going to move back. Well, I actually move like five feet because he's hurting pretty bad. Um, this guy move back up here, and this guy moves up here as well. They're going to start loading up this uh, ballistae right now. As I think sitting right there is dead and right, but they can't fire it yet. Um, down below. Oh, they all moved away on that turn, even when you said that. I shouldn't have moved them yet, but they would have moved on their turn from your persuasion, Silith. Um, yeah. I think that's it for the crew. Yep. The knight. He was on the edge of the boat, so standing there, so he's going to move back on top. Keep a look around. Don't see anything. The grunts. Oh, yeah, this guy had one. So no one's over there seeing this, but he's going to sling the thing. Tell me you're watching this, though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You see him kind of grab a hold of it and kind of like he's doing a, a hammer throw. So to speak, on one side he kind of slings the pole around, then he releases it, and you watch as this thing gets flung out here into the abyss and disappears into the abyss. Excellent. Okay, the other grunt, he's standing here. He's watching you, Tolman, ready to attack something if he sees it. But he will move down another layer. Actually, down two layers. And he's going to be looking in through the hole here. We're on Scylla's side. And he's going to try to grab that thing. Ooh! So if you watch as this pole kind of sticks out from the window out there, and you see... Oh, he doesn't have a pole. Shit, he's not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he just reaches it with his bare hands. He's going to stand right yeah. here and just kind of look in the window. Actually, he'll pop his head in the window and look. Oh, shit! He says something in gift to you. And then pops his head back out. Okay, this guy had one over here. You do the same thing. Try to chuck it. Ugh. You see him kind of... Well, no one sees this. Who would see this? Tolman, yeah, Tolman, okay. you'll see this one as well. Anyone on this side of the ship would see it, basically. So he grabs a hold of it and slings it, lets go of it. It goes about five feet, and then it starts falling back towards the guy. <laughs> well, it's 15 feet away from him now, though, right? Ten you foot what? pole. Ten foot pole. Yeah, so it's about ten feet. Well, yeah, that's right. I'll do that. So if he threw it, if he threw it five feet and then started falling back, it's fifteen feet away from him. Okay. Yeah. Right about there. We'll fear the mind a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's it for the grunts, as I recall. Toman, you're up, buddy. I'm gonna do the whole hammer throw thing. So that's a dex check. Right, yep. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> bad about out. If anyone can see this, uh, unfortunately, only the Gith are seeing it. So you sling it off into the abyss, and it disappears. Anything else for you, Tommen? Um, my question is, this guy isn't on the same side of the ship as me, is he? No, he's not. He's really over here. Correct. Um, so I don't see any more of these... Sack bags on this side of the ship. Nope. Um, all right. I guess I will move back up towards the deck. Okay. Don't move yourself. Okay. Good enough. And Keeping an eye out for more of those things as well. No worries. All right. So these guys are up next. Who do I have left? Are any of them still alive? Uh, this one. Down there by this you. One. Yep. 
and this one by the baboon. Ah, okay. Let's start off with the one closest to you, Silith, the one over here. So. On the lower deck. You know what he's going to do. He's going to take a step forward. And wisdom save, is that right, to oh, try to wisdoms. break your sanctuary? Yep, wisdom save. <laughs> this will go good. Okay. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. it's like confused. You see like a, his tentacle reach out, and it kind of turns into like a little maw at the end of it as he tries to bite onto you, but it kind of rears back at the last second, almost like it's like smells something bad. And, there's and it nobody, loses its attack. And there's nobody else close enough to it. Okay, and the next one up will be this guy. Oh, he's falling <laughs> onto a guy. <laughs> and it slams right into him. So if you hear the scream, anybody on this side of the ship will probably hear that. Usul, you'd probably... No, no, nah, Usul won't. Too far away. Anybody on, on the right side of the ship would uh, hear that guy kind of scream. Ugh. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And the third one was... Oh, by the baboon. The baboon. The baboon that got killed by the frost. Alright, so... Usul... Usul sees us. Tolman, give me a perception check, since you just not came on board. to see if you see this as well. Yeah, you see it as well. So you see this thing, at the baboon kind of knocked it off, and then, uh, was it Sylvia or Rusul hit it with the, the frost? I think it was Sylvia, wasn't it? You could have... Yeah. All right, so Sylvia basically destroyed the baboon. This thing falls, or goes out, I shouldn't say fall, goes out another five feet, and then it changes trajectory, almost like it's on a gravitational pull. And starts falling back towards the ship in a trajectory kind of in this direction, if you guys can see that. You guys At got it? Deck level. I'm sorry, Tillman, what? At deck level? Yeah, he's your height. You can see him. Okay, and that's it for those. Okay, Diddy, what's Diddy doing? Ooh, that's me. <laughs> Sorry. So no, no, it's all good. It's all good. So uh, Diddy's there on the deck part. I want to measure it. five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Oh yeah, uh, we're going for another uh, push. Diddy's Diddy's gonna pop himself down, and uh, he, he's gonna he's gonna run at it again. He's gonna try and. Uh, he wants to uh, do, pull the same stunt, essentially. Okay. It's going to be a little bit higher DC because you kind of kind of hit him and turn instead of just going straight from a, from a run. So it's going to be a little bit higher DC to do this, but go ahead and roll me a, a dex or yep. strength, whatever. It was uh, athletics, I believe you had to do. Okay. Uh, boop. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're hitting it with your shield. Not gonna, you know, high, high enough athletics, that's good enough. So, it's going to be a dex for him to see if he can latch onto your shield or get knocked out. And you watch as the thing just poop, shoots out the window by another 10 feet. And that's about the extent. So go and move Diddy up to right to the edge of the window if he wants. Yep, going. Boop. He's, he's snapping there, but that's... Okay. I, I got it. Yeah. Okay, anything else for Diddy? Uh, Diddy's gonna, uh, shout out to Silith, uh, what's going on with these things? Who are you saying that to? Silith. Okay, in common, I'm assuming? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so now the Gith are gonna understand you, or respond to you, at least not in the like, language you understand. Uh, if I start going in Dragonic or Celestial, I'm pretty sure they're still not gonna understand, so... <laughs> you don't Silith know that, will yep. understand, <laughs> will understand the Draconic, but... Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's that's good timing. All right. So Diddy, whoever's on the left side of the ship, or at this point, the almost say the skiff is gone beyond the destroyer. It's shot past it. 
So no longer can you see the skiff, and the skiff can no longer see the destroyer. But anybody that's on the left side of the destroyer, roll me a perception check. That's Toman, Gith, Warrior Sala, Grunt, Grunt, uh, Diddy, and Usul. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much everybody. Yep, looks like it. Everybody except the skiff. <laughs> well, Sylvia can't because she's under, she's inside. Oh, that's right, there's, right. There's exactly. not a window there, so not Sylvia. And, and not Sylvia. Uh, Perception? Yep. Diddy rolls a seven. <laughs> okay. So you can. Is that everybody, or are we missing one still? Uh, do, 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 you're Tom missing Toman. No, Toman is Oh, he's there. Toman's got twenty-eight. Did he? Oh, you're missing your guys, the warrior and the grunts. I'm not worried about them because I can't tell you guys what you're what you're seeing if if you're them guys. Oh <laughs> uh, no, fair enough, fair enough. Um, Silith is not rolling. So. All right. All right, so Toman and Usu, both of you guys watch on this side. Here, let me do this. Where's it at? I got to switch layers. Hold on. Trying to move around this giant map is difficult. You guys see that? What just popped out of the abyss on the left side over here? Mother! Alright, so Toman and Usu both see this as these large tunnels kind of reach out as this thing gets... I see nothing. You see nothing? Way mm -hmm. far, far left of the map. Underneath the turn order. Yes, I see it now. <laughs> Unfortunately. Alright, so these... Large stones kind of reach out and they snatch up this thing as Diddy, you don't know who did it, but jettisons out this thing, grabs a hold of it, and just pulls it back into the abyss. Out of your vision. And are there any left? Yep, there's one left still. But you guys don't know about it. Dr. P. Oh yeah, we got to resolve Baymax. What's going on with him, right? Oh uh, no, he's he's uh he's right where I want him to be. He's he's our flail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Kenny. He's I, right I like on a, the like edge a, of uh. But he's secured. He's he's only got that. That's as long as as far as his leash goes. So. so I mean, he's. Let's let's talk I, about I, this. I might even I might have even brought him in a little bit, like with. He's got like ten feet. All right, so this is the, uh, let me draw this up here again with my little arrow thing. So this is a taut line now, 10 feet, right? Yep. So 10 feet could be out here, but the, lucky for you, the ship is traveling in that direction. So physics-wise, he's going to kind of swing back down this direction. So you tell me if that's close enough to hit the trap thing. That's fine. I, I think any movement, all of those guys, but th this is fine. So he can trigger the trap, and it basically makes an entangling net <laughs> in the front of the bow spirit is the idea. We're going to catch these critters at the front as they fly by. So it creates a giant net that wraps up Baymax, where it's like a... i got to go back and read the, the thing again. Sorry. It's basically the entangle spell. Ah. So it lasts for one minute once it's triggered, and it's in a 20-foot radius, which is considerably bigger when you don't have ground, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, a big uh, old ball. Yeah, just a big old ball of vines, man. And so I'm just thinking uh, just kind of sits there. It's okay that it grabs Baymax, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's difficult terrain for anything else passing through. They could get stopped, that kind right. of stuff. It, I think it kind of works for our ship. So let me try to wrap my brain around this. So this is basically the entangles, but which is a bunch of vines and stuff spring up out of the ground to grasp something, correct? Correct. Okay, so there's no ground here. So these vines just appear in, in midair, and they wrap all around uh, uh, Baymax first, and the ship is moving in that direction. The vines are not... They're not adhered to anything. They're not affixed to anything. So the ship's basically going to run right into this entangle spell. And the whole front of this ship is not going to have a bunch of vines kind of writhing in front of it. 
<laughs> well, I figured if, if the gravity is kind of relative, they would just stay right there at, within 20 foot radius of the mast. But I guess I'm still kind of grappling with how that works. So, because yeah, again, the ship is moving; it's it's under control of the orbiter. It's moving in that direction, right? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I I suppose so. So then it would just go through a difficult train of vines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me try to do some freehand drawing up here, some vines of what I'm envisioning, and let me know if this makes sense to you. All right. So I'm envisioning this. Uh, the ship ran figured, right into it. I just figured that the trap is centered. Uh, it's it's attached to the ship. So if the ship moves, the trap moves is what my thought was. Yeah, it is now. I'm saying, but the, the ship basically like ran into it. So what I'm envisioning, if if, uh, if this makes sense to you, is you got a bunch of entangling vines, like, all over the front of this. <laughs> Something like that. Does that make sense? Exactly. So I figured it would just be all entangling vines at the front of the ship, but that they would stay there I, because there's nothing that it's anchored to that we're moving into. It's part of our front of our ship. <laughs> yeah. You also have like a, a lithid, but instead of having tentacles, it has like you know, grasping vines there in front of it. Oh, and they're and they're twenty feet, right? <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so these are much bigger. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of sizzling at the edge. No, that's, that's 30 feet out. I got the other mind that. That's actually... Pseudopod catchers, that's what I call it. <laughs> oh, shit. Pseudopod catchers. Oh, right. that's pretty cool. Okay. All right, so that, that's resolved. What else is Dr. P doing? Um, he's going to... Since he's within five feet of the guy whose face is partially melted, he's thinking that he, he's going to look for the nicest... Uh, the least painful spot uh, to set his burning hot rod on and heal the guy. <laughs> okay. So this guy, oh, sorry, switch back to my pointer. This guy's taking the most damage, but he also has like half his face missing and part of one he arm. Got healed for eleven. Okay. All right. So he watches like some of the the gaping holes that are in his chest and stuff, kind of try to mill it back together. But it's like normal his normal green skin in these spots is almost like a milky white. Almost like it's rotten, moldy cottage cheese or something. It's just really, really freaking nasty. But yeah, you you, uh, you help him out there a little bit where the gaping hole kind of comes back together a little bit. But he's still missing part of you know one arm and half his face. My apologies, friend. I did not realize the effects of me shooting them. Kind of turns one side of his face, the one eye you can actually you know, make out, and just mumbles something incoherent. Looks like he's still in a lot of pain. <laughs> Anything else, Dr. P? Nope, that's it for him right now. Okay, Usul. Yes, sir. What's Usul uh, doing? Can I see this guy here? Yeah, you can still see him. He's still kind of above deck. Ah, I'm going to take a shot then. With your bow, right? Yes, yes, sorry. Oh, that definitely hits. Sinks right into him. You see it, tunk, a little chunk of it kind of floats off into the abyss, but it's still mostly there. It continues to kind of fall towards the ship. Well, that's about all I got. Okay, you going to move? You going to stay there? Well, uh, when you ask me like that, it makes me want to move. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to insinuate anything. <laughs> uh, I'll just sit here, I guess. I hope. Okay. Uh, Zerth over here on the skiff. He's going to kind of help this guy stand up. He's going to look around, not see any more danger. And he's going to start helping him walk down underneath, escorting him down below deck. So I'll move him down here for right now. Uh, the monk sees that uh, got these writhing vines up here, just kind of looks back at the, uh, the knight and slowly starts to kind of fall back this direction, lands back on the deck. Uh, the warrior over here, she's going to move back out on top deck. And Sylvia, what's Sylvia doing? I'm assuming she's probably going to take a shot at that thing as well, correct? I thought you went below deck. Did you not go below deck, Sylvia? 
I did. I don't know why I'm uh, showing up up there. That's weird. Yeah, go and place yourself wherever you want. Um, so, yeah, so I should be, like, on the stair here. That's, I don't know how I got back. Okay, yeah, that's where I thought you were, too, as well. Okay. All right, so what's Sylvia doing? Um, well, I'm going to run to the sound of the kerfuffle that I heard down there. Okay. Um, which presumably is over here. Do I see anything? Or is it even further below deck? Uh, give me a perception check right there before I answer that. Oh, God. It's behind me. <laughs> uh, you take a look out this window here and all around the room, you don't see anything. But uh, one of the guys here is pointing out the window. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, you could have, did I see uh, one of those things? You didn't see one of them, but the, the guy oh, right okay. in front of you would have been pointing out the window right here. Okay, then, um, I mean, since I saw that my magic had no effect, um, I'm going to pull out my light crossbow and just fire out the, the window. Just going to shoot out the window, blind? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll me a uh, attack. And a crossbow shoots out the window into the abyss. Yeah. A, a crossbow or a crossbow bolt? Crossbow bolt, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I shot a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> just flung it. <laughs> He's holding the bolt like the crossbow just fires up. How's this work? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that it for Sylvia? Uh, basically. Okay, Sylith. All right, uh, so Silt down here. There's no immediate danger, and he's uh, he's gonna respond to Diddy. How the hell should I know? And then he's uh, he's gonna look, and it looks like it's hard to tell. Doesn't look like anybody's injured down here. Uh, nope. I don't think they hit anything. They tried to, but they st they uh, it missed. Yeah. So uh, Silt uh, is going to head back up to try and regroup with the rest of the party. And hold on, how far is that? Just 15. So that'd be 30 right there. Uh, what's the range on this? What's the range on this? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, is it just me? Uh, I'm just thinking, this guy with the green dot here, is he hurt as well? Uh, the green dot means... I can't yeah. see his... I can't see his HP, but it's really, really faint on my screen. Yeah, it looks like he got hit by something. Uh, uh, is he melty or no? Yes. He's got one arm. He's right. completely gone. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit him with a... Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit him with a greater restoration. And you watch as... He, he's got a stub like where his shoulder is. I mean, one arm is like completely gone at this point. And you see the kind of... The growing up his neck, across his, his chest and everything. And you see it, the, the spreading seems to stop. Like, almost like the melting, oozing, stretching sounds of his body seem to kind of stop. And he stops screaming a little bit, but he's still missing an arm. I mean, I'm, I'm a miracle worker, but I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean like, so, and this guy back you, here is almost the same way. I think he lost part of an arm I got as that, well. Uh, did he got that guy? Yep, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I was, uh, yeah, because he's already got a red dot, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and that's that's all his move, and that's his action. So, uh, that's where Silas still stopping for now. Okay. All right, Twig. I know you're basically out of combat over here, but keeping it in combat until this last one's gone or dealt with or whatever. What's Twig doing? Uh, Twig's just admiring the entangle mess off the front of the bow of the ship. Okay. And Twig, you will see, I'll say at this point, that uh, the ship is kind of circled back around. And let me do my little arrow thing kind of show you. And it's kind of running right beside the ship. It's kind of the same speed as it. Staying the same speed. 
and uh, everyone that's on deck will start seeing some of the other ships kind of show up uh, riding right beside it. So we got, uh, there was a total of four skiffs. Do you guys see there's three skiffs now kind of trailing on each side of it? Um, no sign of the uh, the breaker, but you don't know if that's just because it's not next to you, it's out in the abyss, or whatever. But you see the other ships kind of moving up uh, closer to it than each other. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Twig, then? No. Okay. The crew... Okay, all the crew have been healed, or it's stopped the spreading, correct? Okay. And... So Diddy will start seeing or hearing these guys over here kind of yelling and pointing out this window over here at Diddy. But they're not going out there. Um, this guy, let's see, will he be? Yep. You said Diddy saw it, right? Yeah, Diddy saw no. these guys pointing out this window over here. But Diddy didn't see the thing. No, <laughs> he did not. And Sylvia watched this guy kind of walk over to the window and, and stick his head out. And then start yelling and frantically some more and bring his head back in. And pointing out the window again. And down. Uh, the rest of the crew. Kind of just keeping on watch. Not really doing anything. Okay. The knight. Nothing he's going to do. Nothing the grunts are going to do. Except move back on top of the deck. Oh. Got this one grunt over here. It's actually being mauled. Ooh. Okay, so you guys don't see this. He does this. He does that. Okay, uh, no one is outside on that side of the ship, correct? On the right side of the ship? No one's out there, are they? Actually, no. Everybody on the skip will see this then. That's on deck. So uh, Twig will see this. Professor P. All the monks and everybody. You'll see this guy way over. He's got way to the left of the of the map. If you guys want to see this, there's a, a gith on the outside of the ship that has one of those pods trapped in its uh, its little pole mechanism, but it's on a lower portion of the uh, the destroyer over here. And that's his turn. So Toman, you're up next, buddy. All right. So I don't see anything close to. This guy here is still moving in. Oh, yeah, shit, I forgot about him. Yep. He's still floating or falling towards the ship about deck height. All right, I'll move over there so I can intercept him with the pole. That's about it. Double movement. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me retcon this. Twig, you would have seen this guy from, from your vantage point. So if you want to take an attack at him, you can. I'll let you do that. Well, then I'll shoot my bow at him. Okay. And this is before Toma moves up close. <laughs> okay, yeah, that definitely hits. Slam into it. Pieces of it go flying, but it's still mostly intact. Still falling towards the direction of Toman. Can I get you get your full turn? Do you have more than one attack, Twig? Oh, sorry. I thought it was just a reaction. Hold on. No, it's my fault because I didn't catch that on your turn that you're technically within eyesight of that now. Ooh, that one hits as well. Not quite enough to take it down, but it is still falling and it's kind of changing into all kinds of different kinds of teeth and tentacles and everything, but still falling towards uh, Toman. Okay. And... Technically, I said it was moving right about here, right? So how does your entangle thing work again, Professor P? Is it a deck save or something for those guys? Uh, strength check, I think. Strength check. throw it out there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rule your entangle gets close enough to it. DC 16, strength. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so theater of the mind... All right, Thomas, you watch as the ship kind of catches up to it. This thing is now entangled in some of these vines that are kind of creeping out from the, the front of this little skiff next to the ship over here. 
and it kind of stops this momentum. Um, it's no longer falling towards you, but as physics work, it's basically going to start moving in a direction like this, and then this, and then eventually you probably slam into the side of the uh, the skiff. Hey, Brian, I'm reading this. I don't know if it's it, – it, does the entangled part only happen to at the very first initial burst, or – I mean, kind of need to – The first time a creature steps into the trap. So, yeah, I'll, I'll rule that because it lasts for a minute. Okay. But it says a creature in the area when the trap is triggered. So is that only that round, or is it the one in it? I, thought it, I mean, I thought Entangle was like if, if people walked into it, then it was already there. They they had to make strength checks or be entangled. But this might be different. I don't I don't know what you're. I'm gonna rule. I'm gonna rule it that way. So if, if something else steps into it, then yeah, it's gotta make a strength check to kind of keep from being uh, gra grappled by it. That's how I'm gonna rule okay. it. Okay. Anybody else? I, I honestly I haven't thought about that. Plus, we're in like middle of like no gravity area. Does anybody hurt I mean, differently? All, I mean, like if it's all tangled up, it has to break free, right? Like a grapple. Correct. That seems legit to me. Like if a if a vine grows around you and like is like if it's the same thing as a rope is tied around you until you get it off, you're still restricted. Yep. Yep. I'm liking it. <laughs> all right. So that thing is now restrained or grappled. How's it work? Grappled. Is that what it says? Restrained. Restrained. Okay. All right. So, Tolman, you, that's as far as you can go with your movement. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, look who's up next. The bad guys. So, he's entangled. <laughs> so, he doesn't move any closer to you, Tolman. He's like, say, just out of the reach of your little pole there. But it does kind of swing around. I got to move it over to this other ship here. So, I'm going to rule that it was like right about here. Got entangled. And then it's going to go... Right there where that one is. Oh, shit. <laughs> How you doing, Twig? <laughs> I'm doing what I have. What, what, huh? <laughs> so basically it's slung over here by you. It's going to have... It's restrained. What's restrained do? Uh, the, the attack rolls have disadvantage. Attackers have advantage. All right, so it's going to try to slap at you as, okay. it, as it runs by there. And, of course, I can't hit shit. And that's as far as it goes. It's right in front of you, within five feet. But it hasn't slammed into you yet. Okay. And that was the last one, as I recall. Nope, this guy over here. Okay. Um, no one can see this guy over here, right? No. Was Toman on that side? He was, but he's not there anymore. No, no one can see this other chaos pod, correct? That's my understanding. That's what I'm going with. All right, Diddy's up. One. Uh, so Diddy is uh, he's he's also gonna rush up decks and ten and come out and he's not stopping for Silith. He's gonna head fifteen. Yeah, right there, right in front of those stairs. He's gonna, he's gonna ask Sylvia, uh, "What, what the heck is going on?" So he's you can like, there's these. Go ahead. Sorry. Is he's basically gonna be like, "There's these strange monsters." So Sylvia can respond as a free action if you want. Oh, Sylvia's disconnected from. Uh, what did we lose her? Yeah, we did. All right, so I'm gonna rule for her that she's a, she's gonna no, she's, she's just gonna to uh, point out the fact that the other gift was pointing out this window. Okay, so, right, so, so Diddy can react to that if he still has any movement left. Uh, Diddy has expended all his movement to get where he is now, so uh, Diddy is gonna next turn. He'll look at the window. Okay. All right, Doctor P. Um, shit, it's, it's too close to Twig to risk it. Twig, <laughs> move back! Um, he's going to do something. Uh, he's going to uh, Adrenaline Dart Twig. <laughs> okay. There you go. There you go, buddy! <laughs> and that's his turn. 
You know, twig, you feel a sharp twing in your rear end. The dart gets thrown by uh, Dr. P at you. <laughs> you can free action react if you want. I mean, free action what the face hell? off. <laughs> but you do feel this rush going through you. you get a little high going. Plus two AC, uh, extra action, advantage on deck saving throws. I think it's pretty nice. Okay, that's it for Dr. P. That's it. Okay, Usul. All right. Um, again, you can still see this guy over here. Because, again, that ship's you know, right inside your, your view range over here. The ship's right about here where I'm pinging. Okay. Is it, can I see this one, then? Uh, what the hell was that one? Oh, that was the one that got jettisoned out the uh, uh, the window, as I recall, correct? This one over here is the one that was following, or... Wait, which one? This one over here. Okay, this this one's the one that didn't exist. Correct. So the green dot one. Yeah. yeah, that's that's my green dot, so I can control the other ones. Don't worry about that one. That's okay. the D one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's like that one's not real. <laughs> All right. But you can't see this uh... one. The only one that's still around here is the screaming guy outside this ship. Pay, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Again, you can't uh, see the one over here. It's right in front of Twig. You can't see that one, Usul. Yeah, I can see it. I'm just not going to shoot at that one. Ah, okay. No, so, I thought we couldn't see it because we weren't. the ships weren't close enough anymore. No, they are close enough. They are, they are again? Yeah, yeah, you got all four of the skiffs are kind of... You have like one skiff up, is kind of in this general area. One skiff is in this general area. You know, one here. You see where I'm pinging. Basically, you got the, the destroyers surrounded with the four skiffs. Uh, I just realized something. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is... Hold on. This is two different ships, isn't it? No, it's the same ship. ship? It's just it no. is the same ship. Okay, okay. It's the upper deck, the middle deck, the lower deck, and then the, the two upper we sections. We didn't have anyone on the other ship. Correct. Oh, that's what I was saying. Oh, for a second, I was like, wait a minute. Are these supposed to be different ships? <laughs> no, they're not. It's all the okay, same ship. Alright, so Usu, what are you doing? Um... Is there anybody injured on my ship? On my, uh, deck? Uh, you don't see anybody that's taking a hit, as I recall. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay, I'm just gonna chill then. Okay. <laughs> do 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 Zerus underneath, tending to his dude. The monk. Oh shit, what's he gonna do? He sees that thing right there. Ah, oh, shit. He sees it right in front of Twig. He's going to... I gotta check his sheet. Sorry guys, I'm gonna see if he can do something to help Twig out here. <laughs> nope. Don't want to touch it. He doesn't want to touch it. See if this is self only. Yep, that's self only. All right, so he is going to assist Twig, basically give him advantage on any kind of uh, um, attack against him from this thing, or it'll get disadvantage. If that makes sense. It does. Okay, and then Srala just gonna run around on deck. Cause like, keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out. Don't know if there's more. Sylvia. Oh, Sylvia's, Sylvia's gone. Sylvia's the one. Yeah, no, Sylvia's gone. It's like, wait a sec. Oh, shit. Completely gone. Dis, uh, Discord, end the game. Okay. Don't know what happened. So, I'm going to play for her. She's going to stick her head out here, try to see what they're pointing at. She'll see the dude down here, and she's going to shoot a firebolt. And misses. And then she's going to stick her head back in and scream at Diddy. There's one out there. There's one out there. But the, the guy's got it in his, uh, his pole thing. Who's got it in this thing? She's going to... Well, she's saying this to Diddy. She's said there's a, there's a gif out there that's got one of the things trapped in one of their pole thingies. Not this guy. Yes, that guy. Didn't you say it was melting into his face? Hmm? Didn't it you say him. it landed on him? It hit him. But he's still got it kind of in the 
the the <laughs> thing right in front of him. Is that not the case? Did I say that wrong? I, I didn't think you did. Maybe okay. I missed that part. Sorry. Okay. The right. last part I remember with him was it was melting into his face. Sorry, I might have missed that. Okay. Anybody else? Guess not. Okay, so it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so I'll just heal this guy up here a little bit, or restore him anyways. Um, he's going to come up and try and see what... Uh, or no, he's going to he's gonna hear... Can he hear Sylvia screaming from there? What is that? That's 30, 30 feet? Yeah, she'd been yelling it. I'm good with that. He's he's gonna go out uh, this yeah the closest window to him and see what he can see. Are you going all the way out on the outside of it? Yeah, so he'll go out. He'll at least definitely like stick his head out, like lean out the thing. Yeah. Said it's door sized, right? That vantage point, yeah, you can definitely see the uh, the pod here and the the gif here. It's kind of uh, he's got he's got him in the the uh, the pole thing, but it's got like one of its pseudopods kind of sticking out. And still kind of thrashing at the guy. Uh, what is the range? Uh, what's the distance between me and that guy? It's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'll say 30 feet. Bam! On him? On him. Okay, so that mean you lose it on yourself? No, nope. It's only if I ca- the only time I lose it is if I attack. Okay, just making sure you can't do it on more than one. All right, so I he's got sanctuary that. on him. Okay, anything up for Silith? Uh, that was fifteen feet to move, so Silith can move. Um, where would he be if he went down? He'd be like right about there. Okay, that's fine. That sounds all right. Yep, and you're yep. walking so on the side of the ship, right? Yep. Okay, you get that and, figured uh, out. Uh, Silas is actually afraid of heights, though, so he's more like, um, let, let's do him not as far. Let's say he's still up on the upper layer, because he's more crawling. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm cool with he, that. He does, he does have a fear of heights from that Griffin thing, so. Well, technically, you can only see like 30 feet beyond. Well, maybe a little bit more than that, since the other ships are there as well, the bubbles. Yeah, the beyond. whole gravity perspective thing. Yep. <laughs> I bet it's going to be kind of freaky. So he hasn't he hasn't made it down to the second layer yet. He's kind of like edged over this this. Okay. Uh, this side, yeah. I'm cool with that. Uh, All right. Yeah, that's it. All right, Twig. Got a pseudopod right in your face. I don't like that. I shoot it. <laughs> okay. Three times. Yep, three times. So it's within five feet of you, so it's disadvantage unless you have that feet. Disadvantage, but I, he has his bow in his hand, unfortunately. So okay. Uh, first one hits it for six, and it explodes. So <laughs> ten feet. Let me see how big that aura is. I think it's going to be a lot of people nearby. Yep. So I got the monk. I got. Uh, twig. Um, Dr. P's out of it. Ooh, Baymax is right on the edge, so he's okay as well. So just Twig and the Monk. Give me a deck save. Oh, 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 oh man. Plus nine, which means I rolled a one. Oh, shit. I gotta do it for the Monk. Deck save. Yeah, no problem for the monk. All right, so this thing splatters, twig, and you can feel as soon as it hits your skin, it starts to sizzle. And what did I roll? I got to roll D12. And a five. I got to scroll up, see what a five does. Hit your arm or hand, and you can immediately start to feel like your fingers start to kind of melt away. This thing hits you, and it's got some searing pain in it. And did I even roll? Uh, what's it do for damage? I gotta look it up. Sorry. Death burst. You take uh, one point of bludgeoning damage and, and three points of acid damage. So how much damage? 
Uh, four total. Okay. And you can feel your fingers start to kind of melt. Okay. And that'd, be on my, that'd be on my right hand. Yeah, whichever one was your attack hand. That's actually what I rolled the die for. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm cool with that as well. I had okay. never decided whether he was right or left-handed. <laughs> so what is it with your characters? I mean, you, got, you already got an eye missing. Now you're going to have your fingers start to melt away. <laughs> it, it's, ra it's rangers, Brian. I need to quit playing them. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. All right, so anything else on Twig's turn? Uh, No. <laughs> Okay, poor Twig. I'm not doing this on purpose, man. Yeah, I know you're not. All right, Gith Crew. This is going to be the last round, guys. We reached the three-hour mark. Okay, Gith Crew. Uh, this guy's going to start yipping and yelping, and Gith, as he sees the thing kind of explode onto you, but he can't help. The other crew, anybody down here in danger or doing anything? Nope, they're going to continue to point out the window where they saw the thing. The night. He cannot fix anything with your hand. But he is going to run over to the here and start shouting down below deck. And Gith. And the poor grunt back over here. He manages to catch it back inside its little cage. So it's next turn. It may be able to fling it. Give him one of these. And Toman. What's okay. Toman doing? Uh, I don't think I can see much of anything, can I? Mm, well, you saw the one thing kind of explode and splatter all over Toman. Right, but I'm not, I'm not seeing any more. Um... You can't see any bad guys from there, no. Not from that vantage point. Is there... See. Interesting. Um, I'm just. I guess I'm going to hold my action until I see something that I can do or so help. You're, so you're holding an attack action. Can yeah. You see one. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So. What a question for you, Brian. Yep. Um. Since it melted my hand, what about my bow? Was that the hand that was holding your bow? Yes. You can give me a dex check with advantage, because your other hand would have been on the bowstring to keep it from falling, if that's what you're concerned about. Oh, I was concerned about if it just would actually damage the bow. I didn't think about that, but I knew the string, that. yes, the wood, not so much for acid. Nah, I, I'll, I'll roll that you're able to kind of pull your, your bow back out of the way. It kind of hits kind of like in the middle of your forearm. It okay. kind of goes up towards your hand. Yeah, I'm not going to destroy your your bow and your your hand on the same turn. <laughs> that, well, a, I mean, I was just DM. thinking. Of, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so that guy is trapped. What's he going to do? He's stuck there. All right, Diddy. What's Diddy doing? Last turn before we break it for the night. <laughs> All right, so uh, Diddy's up here. And Diddy is also going to go out the window. Uh, oh, oh, that's the wrong snap. There we go. Uh, what did it do? 15. Where does that put him if he comes out this window? So basically, in, in relation to this one. Because I feel like it doesn't go as far up, right? It basically be like right about here. It should be in line. So there. Yeah, it'd be 30 feet to get him near it. Um, Diddy's, yeah, Diddy's going to go up near him, and he's going to uh, hit him with a lesser restoration. This uh, guy? Yeah, because he's got a little bit melted, right? Yep. He's, uh, he's going to be careful to stay away from the, the flappy uh, pseudopod. Okay. And where's Diddy's screen? Diddy's screen! As long as you're marking off his, uh, his Spice, magic yep. for that. The mana. Yeah, level two. He has a lot less spell points than Silk does. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the end of the round. Uh, here's what I'll do. I'll kind of wrap this up here since we've reached the three-hour mark here. I'm going to go and go. Uh, if you guys are okay with that, I'm going to kind of just theor the mind that you're able to kind of launch this thing off or get rid of it, whatever, off into the abyss. And this, everyone gets back on deck to kind of 
basically the combat's over at this point. Uh, Twig, um, the Zerth is going to run up before the next round, and he's going to cast Lesser Restoration onto your hand. Uh, let me read this thing here one more time, since you're the first actual PC that has this. Um, let's see. Does Greater Restoration heal it fully? Here, let me see if this puts it in chat, because it's, it's, it's huge. So let me read, see if it goes into... There you go. It's a lot of stuff to read, but basically every turn, um, if it's not stopped, you have to make a charisma save. And if you fail that, you basically lose a wisdom point. You can eventually get turned into one of these things. This is metagame-wise. You guys don't know this, because you guys all stopped it. I mean... After the battle, some of the Gith would have shared with you that this is what happens if it's not stopped, like the Zerth, like the Zerth did for you guys, that these things will potentially just die and then turn into one of these things. That's how. That's so this the... guy almost got... <laughs> did Twig get, get healed by Zerth then, or is Zerth downstairs? <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't matter, because Twig can do this. Oh, uh, Twig can do his own restoration? Okay, so yeah. between you or the Zerth... Because like I said, the knight went over here to kind of shout down at the Zerth to get him back up here because he saw his Twig get hit. That's why I had him run over there. So either Twig or Zerth, either one of them, cast on him to stop it. It's just whether how, how permanent is this damage on here. And I'll, I'll, we'll determine that between now and the next uh, uh, okay. session, whether or not there's any kind of permanent damage or whether they got to it uh, early enough. Okay? Um, okay. A- after the battle, again, all four of these uh, skiffs that you have with your, your fleet are kind of uh, within eyesight of the destroyer as well. And uh, you guys will start getting communication from all the arbiters that basically there was one other ship with you guys. It was the breaker, the one that moves really slow. But uh, there's been no contact with that since the, the Chaos Pods storm came through here. Um, they, they have an idea what direction it was heading when they lost contact with it. So the other arbiter is going to basically try to search for that, that breaker if that makes sense. Okay. Anything else you guys want to talk about or ask of the Git or of your, each other? No, we'll just have to remember, Twig, put a token on your character about the haste. Okay. You still got 10 rounds, I think, or, or nine rounds. Okay. All right. So again, the combat's out. Um, if there's any discussion about what you guys saw... I'll let you guys bring it up now, or we can pick that up on the next session. You guys let me know. Mm. I think we're all right for now. Okay. I'm referring to the tentacle like, thing. That, that, that tentacle, I'll say, other than the squid thing, but uh, that never really came in other than we saw, like, just tentacles, right? Yeah, I think some of you guys saw it right around the edge there. So we'll pick that up in the, in the next session. Uh, trying oh, to figure Sylvia out. was the one that majorly saw it, right? And she, she's not uh, here. I think so. All right. All right, guys. So that's it. Any questions, comments, complaints about tonight's session? Good thing. One, one. <sighs> Not for me. Okay. Hey, no. Yeah? It's a pirate's life for Twig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. I don't know. So hopefully that wasn't too difficult. I know trying to work in three-dimensional on a 2D map, uh, I kind of thought it was going to be maybe difficult at times, but that's why I kind of had the four layers on that, uh, that big destroyer to kind of make, maybe help with that just a little bit. So, if you guys got any constructive criticism, whatever, I'll take it. But uh, there may be more battles like this in the future. Yeah, it seemed pretty good. Okay. Um. Yeah, the only the only thing that really surprised me is you didn't uh, like like I said this was three dimensional. You didn't have anything specifically come from the bottom. Well, I mean, when they first came in, several of them landed on the bottom of the ship, and they were crawling they their on way the bottom, up. But they came from the they came from like the top, and people saw them. They weren't just like surprised. There's some on the ship. Well, but the, the the first few came down through the the lower deck down here before you guys even knew anything about it, right? Oh, I thought they were the ones that Sylvia saw shooting by. Oh no, they all came down, and a couple of them came to the lower deck, and one came to the second deck. They were making their way up, but they were but... anyway. Okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. You know, it's funny too. If uh, you know these were ships actually out in the uh, in this area, you'd think they'd have uh, decks on the bottom and the top. Actually, yeah, yeah, the, that could be potentially a thing too. Right, just flip over. No, yep, that's true. They probably like double the crew size. If they're going to do that, but yeah. well, 
That, would, that wouldn't be the case with the breaker because that's part of the reason why it's so tough because it has that uh, that hole on the bottom of it that kind of keeps it from uh, taking on damage. If it had open on both sides, that probably wouldn't be quite as stout. But, yeah, I, I get your point. Plus, I can't find any ships, uh, pictures uh, or maps of ships that uh, have two sides on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you want to draw me one up, I'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool guys, great session. I, I had fun with that. I hope you guys did too, and uh, we'll pick us back up in uh, in two weeks. All right. Good, 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 good easy. All right, thanks, guys.